down a darkened drive, you'll find their candlelight. From a widow's peak, you'll see it burning bright. Through the double doors into their dusty tomb, you'll feel eyes from paintings follow room to room. On the creaky stairs, you may think twice, as you tell yourself those bangs are mice. In the upstairs hall, you'll see shadows dance. There's a light from the candle. This is your only chance. You run and you cry as you curse this dark night, only to find at the end there's no candlelight. Instead, there's some headphones you put on full of fear. When suddenly it's every nightmare rolled into one that you hear. And it says, Welcome to the Paranormal Sideshow with your host, John and Stacey Edwards of Paranormal Sideshow. Hello and welcome to the Paranormal Sideshow. I'm your host, John Edwards, and joined as always by my lovely wife, Stacey. Hello. And we, or me, I'm dealing with sleep depth. Yes, you are. Mounds and mounds of sleep depth. You did not sleep much the, sleep, the last couple nights. The sleep depth chamber. It's two hours last night. <laughs> That's not a lot. No, it's not. And I'm still going. And mm-hmm. it's a, uh, it's a, it's a what? It's like two o'clock in the morning. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. And I've been up all day, no naps, long work day. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm off tomorrow, thank golly. Um, but I tell you, I'm on borrow time. <laughs> well, I'd say you could just sleep all day tomorrow, but there's so many things going on tomorrow. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow's going to be a big day. Uh, <laughs> tomorrow's going to be a really big day. But that's entertainment for us, and mm-hmm. that's just how things work, because we've got a lot of entertainment going on, and we'll be up all night tomorrow night, so it's all good. We like to share that with you guys. It's the kind of things we like to tell you. But you know what else this is? What is it? It happens to be June. It is June. I love June. You do? Mm-hmm. You do. I really love June. I know you do. Do you know why? Because it's your birthday it's month. It's my birthday month. <laughs> and you know what's really cool about my birthday? What's that? It's at the end of the month. So the whole month. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm birthday. pumping my hands in the air right now. <laughs> it's my whole birthday month. It's a big mm-hmm. celebration. You know what else is cool about my birthday? What's that? If you thought about it really hard, you'd get it. It's exactly six months away from Christmas. Ah, uh, yes. And it's it six is. months till Christmas. Right. So as a child. It was the best. Yeah. You were Absolutely up. best. I racked up. Everybody had their money. Of course, back then they had money anyway. Mm-hmm. But it was everybody had their money and it was like, oh, hey, let's we don't even remember what we got, Little John. Let's get Little John more stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I had everything going as the best racket in the world. The best racket in the world until. <laughs> Until? Until this this vile creature, mm-hmm. this first cousin of mine <laughs> named Robert. Now, now Robert has been a loving, wonderful mm-hmm. first cousin and the bane of my existence. Okay, so not only was Robert's mom, who is my aunt, my favorite person in the world, mm-hmm. who absolutely goes AWOL because she had a baby. <laughs> Before the baby, it was me. Mm-hmm. It was me and my Aunt Sharon right. and, you know, listening to music and da, 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 all this cool stuff. And, and we were, we had a lot of good times mm-hmm. and then she had to go and, you know, have a baby, have a baby. <laughs> and, and when she had the baby, not only did she have a baby that took my attention away, not my attention, right? attention away from you, from me, mm-hmm. but, but also his birthday, mm-hmm. June 28th. Oh, <laughs> so right. Oh, the shared party. Yeah. Oh, uh, how much um, older are you? Eight years. Oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, for eight years you had the sole grandchild attention. I did. I did. You know, <laughs> um, and that I think that made it worse um, because the shared parties were terrible, and <laughs> and the 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 gifts really went down, and then everything he did was funny, and well, you know, when when you're getting in that. Eight year old, nine year old range. You know, you're not, you're just not as cute as a baby anymore. He used to run around naked and they thought it was the cutest. He's like, get (laughs) naked. And they thought it was the cutest thing ever. So everybody just watched naked little Robert run around and. And poor John just. (laughs) By himself over in the corner (laughs) listening to Duran Duran. Yes, that was what was happening. But yeah, it was really rough. And then. I, I feel like he probably got paid back because he has a younger sister who was the. Well, yeah, no, 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 no. She got me too. 
<laughs> the first granddaughter. <laughs> the first granddaughter ever. The first girl in decades. And and God almighty, did they just completely forget about us. <laughs> I mean, it was like, I honestly... If I look back and wonder, because I had a troubled, I had a troubled childhood, you know that. Yes, I do. So uh, if I look back and wonder when the drinking and drugs began, <laughs> I would have to pinpoint the day after little Maggie was born, because not only was she beautiful, which she still is, right, but she was named after my bleeding grandmother. Okay, <laughs> so it, it was no chance. No, no, no chance. I had no chance at all. And and then to top it all, to top it all. Robert's a doctor and not just any doctor. <laughs> Robert's went to every freaking medical school there is. Like he's a doctor of doctors. I think other doctors can come and like, hey, doctor, 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 doctor. <laughs> I mean, like I remember like 10, 15, 20 years ago, uh-huh. he was going to be a doctor, like a field and stream doctor. I didn't even know what kind of doctor that was. It's like, oh, he's going to he's a doctor, but he's going out here in the streams to make sure they're I don't know the fish are peeing. All right. <laughs> and And then he goes from that to like. This kind of doctor and that kind of doctor and special kids doctor and then like a heart doctor. And now he's like the main doctor. Right. right. At like a university. And it's just it's nuts because if people knew him, uh-huh. they wouldn't let him operate on him. I certainly hope he doesn't still run around naked because he's going to take away. I, I bet he does because <laughs> he'll take away everything that you love. I'm just telling you, he he's cute and cuddly and all that stuff. And he's really nice. He's too nice. <laughs> And he's always been too nice. Always. And I love him. I love him so much. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I still get that stuff. You know, my Aunt Sharon, she's like, oh, honey, we, I love you so much. And we had it. And, you know, no, no, <laughs> no. Everybody, everybody turned their back on me. But I don't mind. No. I don't mind. It's still my birthday month. It is. And as we get older, mm-hmm. you know, it's not quite the same way it used to be. We've decided to buy each other stuff as we go. Right. Through the year. Right. And we still like try to sneak and get each other something, you know, uh, for the birthday. But it got me thinking, uh-huh. what was the best birthday you ever had? I mean, there has to be one mm-hmm. that you remember above all other birthdays. Right. Everybody should have one of those. What is yours? Well, you know, when I was younger, my parents did the thing where I always had a birthday party, like with the kids at school. Right. Whenever it was my birthday, they decided to throw a birthday party. I'd take an invitation to everybody in my class. Right. And then they would all come and we'd have they whatever actually, little birthday party. They actually came? Yes. Yes. The kids actually came we to my that, birthday I, party. I, 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 did, I, I didn't do that. Like they, they always were like, hey, you want to go have a McDonald's birthday? But I didn't do it because I was afraid. That, <laughs> I had this weird, like uncanny fear that people wouldn't... Uh, Mm-hmm. people wouldn't show up well i think that's why i'm such a good promoter now probably uh we always did them at my house and while we usually lived in neighborhoods where there were also kids so we had like backup kids so just you, in case you had um you had you had invitations for your house party yeah like we would buy invitations and oh, what a cool little kid you were send them out but i think my favorite birthday and i don't know how old i was um probably nine eight or nine maybe not even that old uh we had the party at this little place that i like called jj july's Mm. this was in virginia beach i used that's where i grew up you know because my dad was in the cool name of the place yes and it was like an ice cream shop right like malt shop like an old school yeah yeah i really loved it because we'd go and get ice cream all the time and my parents set up a party there and they hired a clown. Oh, God. Yeah. And, you know, I wasn't oh, no. super fond of clowns, but it was a really funny show. And they and the clown actually made me come up front uh-huh. in front of all the other kids. Right. And the clown dressed me up like a clown. Like, and like, for some reason, I just remember that. And, like and I, took your clothes off and put little no, clown no, no, clothes no, on like you? Like put a wig on me and a oh. big bow tie. And oh, I was going to say, do you, need and, to, do you need to take a moment here? And, <laughs> do you need to show me the doll? <laughs> yeah. Was, where did the clown... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but um, but I do remember that. I don't know if I remember it because it was my favorite oh birthday. Oh my god, is that I the was... one? Did the picture of you as a clown? Yes. Oh, you're so adorable. Well, I just... Oh, you were such a cute kid. <laughs> I don't know if I I remember it so well because it was my favorite birthday, or because I w- the clown was a surprise, or because I was so devastated that. <laughs> There's a clown there making me dress up like a clown. That's why I remember. Man, it. they had to spend some money on you. Um. Well, I mean. Do you know how much a good alcoholic clown costs? <laughs> I don't know. Especially when they dress as the kid. I wonder <laughs> if that's still allowed. 
<laughs> no it's like, hi, I'm your clown. I'm going to dress your little girl. <laughs> it was fun anyway, though. Yeah, his name was last fun. name wasn't Gacy or anything. I, I have no idea what his name was. I had no part in the hiring of the clown. It could have been the right time. I just like that one because that was my favorite place, you know, that little restaurant. JJ July's. JJ July's. I don't know if it's still a business or not, but it was when I was a kid. If you live at Virginia Beach and you know JJ July's, <laughs> you should drop us a line and let us know. You know, I did have um, one year. Wait, isn't there like a JJ's gallery of girls out there too? No, that's JB's. Oh. It's probably his brother or something. Yeah, I was just wondering, like, <laughs> J, JB, don't it? It's a totally different thing. Um, it's a lot of J things. I should go out there. There was this uh, one place that we used to go when I was a kid. Uh, it was a roller skating rink. I loved roller skate. And I am I feel like we I went there one time with some friends for a birthday. I didn't have a party that year. Like, I just, me and some friends went to the skating yeah. rink. But it was this place called... You lived S- on Silver Spoons. It was this place called Spinning Wheels. Right. And it was my favorite. We used to go every weekend. My parents would drop us off. Me and my sister would. They would drop us off at the skating rink. Your you could parents do wanted that. You get abducted. No, you could do that back then. No, like, yeah. They would drop us off, you and now, like a too. bunch of other kids would be there. Yeah. And other we would stay for. Kids. We would stay for two or three hours, and just they had certain nights where kids would skate. And I got a T-shirt from there. I wish I still had this T-shirt, and it was my favorite T-shirt I wore all the time. It said "Spinning Wheels." We do it on the floor. That was the T-shirt for the place. I didn't get it. I was a kid. Like when I was older, I was like, "Hey, wait a minute!" <laughs> <laughs> like that first time you listened to the Grease song, right? <laughs> Which one is that? The the, the, the car Grease one. Grease Lightning. Grease one. Lightning. Yeah. And you're like, like, "Oh my god!" I got it later on. I was like, "I wish I still had that shirt because it was kind of it was you know very yeah." I wish you still had retro seventies or whatever. I could think of a lot of clothes from Virginia Beach. I wish you still had <laughs> all my OP stuff. I'll leave that right where it's at. <laughs> but yeah, that's um. That's really cool. The Virginia Beach Times. I'm kind of glad I didn't know you. Oh, I was pretty young. Yeah. I mean, you, you really had that. People always talk about my life sounding like a a movie. Mm-hmm. You know, they always bring that up. Like, dude, you know, <laughs> your your teenage years, it always sounds like a movie. You, and yeah, but yours is more like an after school special. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It really is. You're it right. Is. And you're, yours, but you had like this wholesome, and at the same time, you're not even catching what is going on. Your parents are going out and getting stoned. <laughs> like, they're like, because you're like, oh, they, you told me the other day, they're like, oh, they dropped me off at the ice cream parlor. I was there for my friends. Man, they're out there. Like, they're over at their friend's <laughs> house hitting the bong. I mean, they, they used to get together with their friends all the time, and play cards. They'd have card night. What kind of cards they play? I'm not sure. I think bridge and pinochle and stuff. Like oh. they, they really liked. I I have no idea. They My played parents a lot played of games. rook. They may have been playing quarters. They were drinking. I don't know. There was all kinds. Of, and the, they, everybody bring their kids, and the kids would all yeah you know, do whatever right. while they played, and it would be like you know two or three in the morning by the time we went home. Exactly. Now we <laughs> didn't have like. Um, it wasn't people I didn't know like that, but mm-hmm. my parents used to go to uh, my my cousin's house, mm-hmm. and uh, I guess my aunt and uncles, and they lived uh, way up the road at the time. But I remember going up there, and they would play Rook, and mm-hmm. it seemed like, I remember thinking, Rook must take 10 hours. It must be, <laughs> it must be you know, ridiculous, yeah. and I remember my cousin always watched shows I didn't like, uh-huh. so it was cool in the sense that you know, I got to experience something that, and he was a bastard. Like that cousin was a bastard. He's dead uh-huh. now. I can say that, but he was, he would be like, <laughs> he'd be like, we're watching emergency. And I'd be like, <laughs> all right. He's like, it's my favorite show. Okay. I don't watch it. Do we have to watch this show? And, and it was like, he always loved shows like that. There was another one with a fire truck. Um, oh God, what was that? It was a it was a really popular show, but yeah, he he was always into the the shows like that, mm-hmm. like all the network, and I I wanted to watch wrestling, you right. know, at all times, no matter where. I wish you took a book with me. I was because it was it was a lot of people that my mom worked with. Like my mom was a secretary, and she worked somewhere where there was like twelve secretaries, and right. it was all the secretaries and their husbands and their families, and that's all the people that would get together. And I would always take books with me. I read a lot. When I was a kid, that makes sense. Sometimes I didn't really like the other kids. I mean, I didn't not like the other kids, but sometimes I, I would get tired of playing with them, so I'd bring books. And then at, whenever they were done and we would drive home, I would purposely fall asleep in the car so that they would have to carry me inside. No, because my dad would carry me and put Aww. me to bed. <laughs> like I purposely tried. Is that why would, you do that now? I would. <laughs> no, now I think I've just trained myself to sleep in the car. <laughs> okay. Because I, I mean, I'll totally carry you in if, if that's what's going on. And put me to bed. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's pretty funny. 
mine is um, not going to top yours, <laughs> but my favorite memory of one is also in my favorite house. I, I spent a mess of a time, like all the time at my grandmother's. OK, mm-hmm. all my all of my coherent time, mm-hmm. like when I was awake, was at my grandmother's. Right. And um, it, it was this incredible house. And I know houses are cooler when you're a kid. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you seen my second house for my grandma I'm, you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. big house you know right right so this one was too and this one uh, it was just amazing there was just so much cool to this house and uh, I remember we we came up there and we, the family used to all eat together anyway it was awesome you know we had this big table and uh, we had a great family at the time that that all just was together all the time we were very close mm-hmm. and and it's a great way to re- to grow up it's very old school southern everybody always is up in each other's business because you're always together. Mm -hmm. I mean, you watch TV together, you discover things together, you go to movies on holidays together. I mean, everything's together. And you stepped into that. Like when we got together, you were like, my God, I've never, (laughs) I've never seen seen anything like this, you know? Um, But it was just normal for me. Right. There was, you know, 20 of us and we were happy about it. But Mm -hmm. I, uh, I came up there and I kind of suspected something because I've always had that intuition. And my dad goes on in to the front door and and I remember sneaking like a little thing I was and going around the corner and peeking down. It was quite a ways. And I could see everybody out back where we would grill Mm -hmm. and they were all sitting in their chairs and all this stuff. And I seen the like the happy birthday and all this stuff. And I seen presents on the table and I seen my motorcycle (laughs) that I got when I was five years old, five, five years old, my, my Suzuki JR50. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was uh, so I snuck back around and there's pictures still you can find where I walk out and I put my hand over my heart like I was so shocked and everything. And they're all like, <laughs> oh, look at little John, Acting you know, even then, and, right? yeah, I was like, oh, oh. And then I get on the motorcycle and I wreck right off the bat and, you know, and, and get back on it as you should. But it was such a cool place. And my granddaddy was so cool because he had us this big motorcycle track that Mm -hmm. and all the way through the woods and it was you know you could do the jump there was jumps there was everything it was it was freaking awesome growing up like that Mm -hmm. and you know just every kid should have a motorcycle before they have a bike i have no (laughs) idea how if i could put one of my kids on a motorcycle at five years old I would have a heart attack. You have to tie me down. <laughs> it was natural selection back then. No, <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I think I that know I every, think, everybody in your family rode them, though. Yeah, I mean, everybody. It's different. Yeah, I mean, it's different. Everybody, and they rode them in big races. Mm-hmm. Um, we had local course and stuff, um, but they actually rode them in. I mean, it's like kids that grow up around horses. They ride horses before they can walk. You it, know, it's it not was second. <laughs> it was second nature, right? Um, and you know, it became more so that we always had cars and motorcycles and and mm. that was just my family and guns that's just sort of southern family southern family southern family it's just what they do you know mm-hmm. sundays was going out on the lake and fishing and mm-hmm. um you know bringing them back and cleaning the fish and uh going deer hunting every every fall and all that good stuff and it's uh i never really got the affinity for all that and i think because i was <laughs> around it so much right that i just i don't know i i i, I was had weird things happening to me then like you know i was thinking about not too long ago when i was talking to people that weren't there and and my great my great grandmother who mm-hmm. i called granny mm-hmm. she was like she i mean she came down hard mm-hmm. she was just like it was weird it's weird looking back at it and right. sometimes thinking about how hard somebody came down mm-hmm. but she was just like you can't do that little john <laughs> and i'm just like okay and she's like, you can't do that. Don't ever let anybody see you do that. Don't I bet wa- she could she could do it um, too. You know, it makes me think. Yeah, and maybe somebody came down on her yeah. about it. And it makes just- me think. See, the weird thing is, like, I remember when her husband died, mm-hmm. and it would have been my great grandfather or whatever. I remember being up at that house before she moved down there with us, and I mm-hmm. remember seeing him come down the steps and looking over at me and grinning. Mm-hmm. And now I know that that was like that time period and that's freaky, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's just really, it's just really freaky. But speaking of freaky, Mm -hmm. all right, since we, since we went through all that and we're talking about favorite birthdays and everything, I want to talk about Facebook. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. And the reason I'm going to talk... It's not where I thought you were going. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, the reason I'm going to talk about Facebook is because I was like, you know... We used to have this this MySpace type thing when we started Haunted South and and Wes launched it. We wanted some kind of social interaction. And all these teams from around the world created their own page mm-hmm. and we all shared ideas and it was exactly what we wanted when we started the podcast. And it was really cool. They could put their evidence up, they could put their pictures up, and it was it was an I loved it. It was a really nice idea. And uh, we would always try to bring teams on mm-hmm. and promote them and and really not Make it about everybody else. Let's right. make let's make it about everybody else. It's not about us. Let's put you up on a pedestal and mm-hmm. talk about what cool place you've been. Because my theory was everybody has a local haunting that nobody knows about. Mm-hmm. Everybody has one, um, you know, last house on the left or whatever. They all have a Cincinnati tunnel and right, you right. know. So um, that was a lot of fun, and, and I really started missing that. I really did. And we have a lot of big plans for the rest of this year mm-hmm. um, of things we're doing with a lot of investigations and, and a, I mean, a lot of investigations. And I started thinking, you know, I really would like to know more because people send me a lot of private messages, mm-hmm. send you a lot of private messages, and they discuss things that are very important to them in the paranormal. Mm-hmm. So I started, uh, I, I was like, well, how am I going to get these interactions up? So my big plan was I'm going to put a bunch of comics up. Uh-huh. Every day for a couple of weeks. And yes. if people share those, it'll probably show up in their news feed a little bit better. So um, I did that and I'm still doing that. But then I started putting a question of the day and getting some really good conversation. Oh, yeah. Some of the stories that people are putting S- up. Some are creepy. So creepy. I, and it got me thinking, we have the weirdest listeners in the world. <laughs> Which is what we want. There, w- There is something wrong with every one of you. <laughs> And, and, and we absolutely love you for it. Not, not one normal answer. I didn't get one normal answer. Not one single time did I get some, someone say titties, you know, (laughs) it was all, it was all absolutely like, well, John, um, here's what happened. You know, after I got abducted by Sasquatch, he put me in the flying saucer and then he introduced (laughs) me to his ghost mom. You know, it was like all this amazing stuff. And of course I'm joking right now, but let me tell you the serious side of this. Some of them really got me, really got me. Some of them were so amazing that, hello, you guys need to be talking to, you know, Travel Channel and Mm -hmm. and being on one of those My Ghost Stories because it was really cool stuff. Um, I applaud everybody who has who has partook in this. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to ask you right now. If you're listening to the show, which you obviously are, and you like the show, which you obviously have to, I mean, come on. If you're still listening this far in. Yes, I think so. Right. (laughs) So I want you to go to your Facebook and I want you to look up facebook.com slash paranormal sideshow. And I want you to hit that like button and start participating. You're, You're only about a week behind on questions. Go answer them now go answer now i'll still respond Mm -hmm. i'm trying to respond to every single one of them if i don't respond to it then it's only because i truly missed it um that happens Mm -hmm. but um yeah the comments come up weird like sometimes they they, it filters some out and you have to like make sure you've got all things yeah social media has become really strange with the with the filters and everything but yeah everybody needs to go there and do that and don't forget we're trying to raise money for stacy's leg um so before i chop it off i want to make sure i have enough to put one back on Mm -hmm. uh, because we're going to get the warm leg so she can throw that over me at night and i'm like oh hey the the permanently shaved by the way (laughs) not that stacy ever lets her legs get hairy i don't want to ruin anybody's stacy fantasy (laughs) Uh, but you know i'm not saying that it i think sometimes a wookie got in the bed or anything like that no no she she's always mostly mostly there and, uh, you know, it's just, it's a good thing to work up to. The way you do that is join our Patreon mm-hmm. and little Stacy will be able to have a good Christmas and know what we're really trying to do. Uh, there's going to be somebody listen at some point <laughs> and worry about and, my leg and truly think you've got like some kind of leg syphilis or something and <laughs> you know that you're going to be losing it. And, um, th- th- you know, what's th- what th- came from is the dead files we watched. We watched dead files last night mm-hmm. and they were talking about, <laughs> she was talking about these, these, she just the way she said it i didn't discuss this with you when we were watching it but she was on this property and it was one of the newest episodes and there were these women outside 
<laughs> but she's like, there's these whores <laughs> out on the front. Whores. And then when Steve got on there, he was like, so tell me about the whores. <laughs> and I was just laughing because they were just enunciating whores in such a strange way. And she's like, the whores have syphilis. And the the one has her nose that fell off. And, and I'm like, I didn't know that happened. I've not had STDs. I'm not sure. Is that part of the syphilis or is that just something because she's dead? Maybe they said sniffless. Maybe that... <laughs> Maybe that's some kind of, maybe you get that from like doing bad stuff down, you know, like with your face. I mean, <laughs> no idea. It's like, ah, you got the sniffless. Where have you had that thing? You know? And so, <laughs> Sorry, don't sneeze. Oh, oh, God. You know, I'm sure it's a thing. I'm sure. I mean, it, it, sex is dirty. <laughs> Abstinence. That's what I say. Um, but yeah, it's uh, Patreon to be awesome. So if you do the $5 or more. Mm-hmm. You get all the episodes of Haunted South and soon Third Side because we're, we're we're going through all the Haunted South ones. And you get our Realm of Shadows show, mm-hmm. which we just did that preview with the Tim Woolworth episode. That's why you got two episodes last week. Kind of show you the the serious side of Stacy because, you know, she goofs off all the time. I know. I'm uncontrollable. And yeah, so definitely the big thing, though, Facebook, uh, please go do that and hit like and, and tell your friends and tell your enemies and you know make your cat an account and and please make your cat an account please <laughs> everybody listening to me make your cat an account and join us <laughs> and when i put those questions up please answer as mr wigglesworth <laughs> it'll say meow 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 meow, meow. i i I, do, I want well i know i how am i going to understand the meows google translate <laughs> if that if if that works <laughs> You know, it'll, it'll be like Vietnamese restaurant. Um, no, um, wow, that's terrible, Stacy. That is that is not funny at all. You know what they've been doing? They'll they'll demonetize you. Oh yeah. And it's uh, and that's it's true. really that's really a scary thing. Let me mm-hmm. let me get real serious for a second. Mm-hmm. So we make sure that this never gets any monetization. When right. Um. So YouTube has went bananas. Mm-hmm. And not only had they been doing a little bit of this, uh, you know, a little bit of censoring, kind of started, you know, with the Alex Jones thing, which I still disagree with personally, because I think censorship is never good. Even if you disagree with somebody, even if they're talking about, you know, gay frogs, whatever, Mm -hmm. I don't agree with censorship. No, I, I was pretty sure where I lived in the United States of America that you didn't have to worry about things like that. But these tech companies have found this loophole where they have all the power. And the weird thing about it is it's supposed to be like your town square Mm -hmm. and you should have these opposing viewpoints and, and be able to have safe opposing viewpoints and be able to talk, you know, if you're left wing, you should be able to talk about it in right wing without getting banned without getting demonetized because there's a lot of people you know that have been making their entire career since Mm -hmm. like 2008 say they left their job at the law firm Mm -hmm. to make their youtube channel and and they've done little things here and there the adpocalypse you know um where there where there was like some coke ads on the front of some white nationalist stuff you know i'm sorry youtube you should have done a better job with letting the white nationalist stuff up there you know (laughs) I don't agree with that stuff being on there because that's hate. Right. And, you know, like you shouldn't have either side of that either. Mm -hmm. You know, there should as much as there shouldn't be that there shouldn't be anybody hating anything. There shouldn't be people on there hating unicorns. I mean, if you're actually just talking, you know, if you're just completely nothing good's coming out of this. And and Mm -hmm. again, opinion here. Absolutely opinion. But I just think we should all be able to have our voice. Uh, I agree. And I think that people should exercise self-censorship. Like if you, if something comes on and it's something you don't agree with or it triggers you or you think it's wrong, just stop watching it. Yeah. I mean, it's that, it's not hard. You just turn it off yeah, or if stop watching it. And don't, if you're a liberal, don't watch Fox news. If yeah. you're a Republican, you probably don't want to watch. CNN. I mean, that's a lot better than letting somebody else decide yeah. for you. So we always stay what you can watch. We always stay politically free for you guys. Okay. We don't want you to get triggered. We don't want you to have to get triggered because that's not what this is about. We've got friends on both sides 
we have friends that we have brought on to the show that everything they post on Facebook is against what we believe personally. But that doesn't matter because we're still your friend. We're still going to be your friend. We're not going to talk about that. And, you know, it's it's just one of the it's how we want to live. It's how we want to live. And you know what the funny thing is? We actually like politics, <laughs> but we're not going to ever go there because you got to have you got to have somebody out there because some of my most enjoyable podcasts that I love to listen to, I love to listen to get ruined because in the midst of entertainment or whatever I'm listening to the show for, mm-hmm. you know, if I'm listening to a wrestling podcast, I don't want to hear politics. Right. Now, regardless if I agree with them or not, I don't want to hear it. Right. I want to hear wrestling. Because you want to be entertained. Yeah, I want to be entertained. Well, I think the weird thing about YouTube, and I think the reason that you brought it up is in doing this censoring thing that they're doing, aren't they censoring like what they call conspiracy theories? Like people that just have like flat earth well, and things like that. Here's the weird thing. They, they get on there. It all started with uh, Louder, Louder of Crowder, Stephen Crowder, um, because he was talking about some dude from Vox. Okay, that's mm-hmm. where it all started. Not even going to get into that. But when they did this, they they censored, like you said, they censored all kinds of things, thousands. Mm-hmm. And, and by censoring, they completely demonetized, which is going to take the channel out. Right. Or they deleted all the videos. Mm-hmm. Or they just turned the channel down, off, you know. So in this new rules they have, some of those, yes. Um, they, they had already made it hard to find some conspiracy stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to show up in your recommended and all this stuff, which mm-hmm. which I never understood. OK, because, again, self-censorship, as she was talking. But it's odd sometimes the things that get listed. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm talking about this. It's very odd to me. I don't want to believe in flat earth. OK, no part of me wants to believe in flat earth. But I watched this 30 minute video on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, my God, that really raised some good questions. And Right. Well, what I don't understand about it is is people that believe in flat earth, that's not hate. No. They just have no, an no, no. opinion. Yeah, no. And, and and that's the whole thing about it. It's just an opinion. Mm-hmm. So in this big news release, mm-hmm. and you can go look it up for yourself, it, it lists flat earth. Like, it's going like uh, YouTube cracks down on hate, blah, 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 conspiracy, flat earthers. Mm-hmm. And it actually said 9-11 truthers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which again. Right. If you've ever watched a 9-11 video. And then, you know, you're you're going to sit there and you're going to ask questions. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, I'm a very, very pro country guy. Right. You know, mm-hmm. like I am just, I you know, I support my military, the whole nine yards. And I remember somebody sneaking one of those in, and I've, I've talked about this before. I ordered some, you know, uh, Memphis wrestling DVDs. Oh yeah. And mm-hmm. on on one of them, I'd, I would fell asleep watching it, and on one of them, somebody had actually snuck. Oh yeah, I think we made the joke that it was like code. What you were asking for was actually code for. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nine eleven video. Yeah. So that was the first time I seen it. I woke up, mm-hmm. and I, I was watching it, and they were like showing all this stuff, and all of a sudden your mind just like. You know, <laughs> yeah, and uh, and and a lot of those conspiracies are like that, but they they opened my eyes to things that were real mm-hmm. and absolutely real, mm-hmm. and 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 when you wake up, as you know, you want to term it, what they're trying to do is make sure nobody wakes up, nobody wakes up on any front, mm-hmm. and that censorship is scary, mm-hmm. and there's nobody really doing anything. Like I know they've talked to it, and they've had people in front of Congress, and. All that, but as of right now, they're still just doing whatever they want. So some little twerp in a room decides that you're getting demonetized, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. their personal feelings. That's not a good formula. That's, no, definitely not good. So you know, I don't know. I, I know that they they've been hard on UFO videos. They have and channels that post UFO yeah. stuff. All the UFO channels, stuff that we watch regularly. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, they've had some trouble with some of those. It just makes it weird to me when you do that. Mm-hmm. It makes it strange because on one hand, we're having some great disclosure right now. Mm-hmm. And on the other hand, this, I don't know, it's just very, just very weird. Just thought I would mention that because I just think it's really weird that they included Flat Earth. Mm-hmm. 
That was so weird. But something that has nothing to do with YouTube <laughs> on the tube tube. Uh, the actual tube. Well, the boob tube. <laughs> the I wonder. Who, I wonder where that came up. Boob tube. I have no idea. Like, 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 where did that originate? That's an old saying. Yeah, the boob tube. Back when TVs had tubes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, right? <laughs> right. But when the TVs have boobs, I have no idea. Yeah, Skinamax, <laughs> late night and eighties. Trust me. No, the paranormal TV. Mm-hmm. It's been a long time since we talked about any of it. It has. But there's a lot of stuff that's been going on. Mm-hmm. Um, a week ago, the new season of Ancient Aliens, as we talked about on the last episode. Mm-hmm. So that was great. The first episode was fantastic. It was very good. Uh, second episode, not so much. <laughs> second episode was more of, you know, like a whole hour of, we don't know if this is an Indian in the desert <laughs> or if these rocks just look this way. I think maybe you just weren't as interested in the topic that time. But, yeah. Like, <laughs> not for an hour. No, that's true. So, um, unidentified. Mm-hmm. The big Tom DeLong, you know, yes, um, yes. this thing of slow disclosure. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. It is. And I love the way that they're doing the show. It's it's totally different than any normal UFO show you would see. Yeah. Two weeks of the same and thing. And it's actual interviews with people that are very important Mm -hmm. and actually saw what happened right pilots and high-ranking officials and yeah i mean it's really interesting it is and i can't wait to see what else they go over yeah i mean it's 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 honestly amazing what we're getting to see this is Mm -hmm. footage from the united states government Mm -hmm. these are as you said people that like tonight's episode the guy Mm -hmm. graduated from top gun school and oh and and it's extra information even though we saw the videos and, yeah. and they released these videos. What's on this show is more elaborate information about those sightings yeah. and the and the eyewitness reports from the people that actually saw it. Yeah, so, so. I, I'll tell you right now, unidentified. You need to check it out if you've mm-hmm. missed it already. I would check it on demand. Uh, really, really good stuff there. And you know, uh, I think Ghost Adventures has a new se- a new season coming up, and mm-hmm. there's going to be a lot to talk about. Yes, because they're going to start with the one that we talked about. Yes, the story about the jars outside the Crescent Hotel. I think right. that's the first episode. Yeah, yeah, of course they. Had to do that because it made national news. Yeah, so and that they wasn't that one up to the first. That wasn't very long ago either. I, and there's going to be one of the shows going to the place that you always had number one on your list of of places. I you were like, where does Stacy want to investigate? Mm-hmm. It's always been Lalori Mansion. Lalori Mansion, yes. And there's actually finally a show that's getting into Lalori Mansion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's that's nuts. It's the one with Katrina and Jack Osborne. Yes, yeah, I think that's the and one. It's like, I think Katrina posted something about going. So yeah, it's called Portals to Hell. Mm-hmm. And, um, and and actually, the LaLaurie Mansion episode was like uh, this past Friday. Mm-hmm. So it's it should be on demand. But we haven't got to see that one yet. But no. I just think it's I think it's pretty cool. There's a, there's a lot of stuff coming. I'm the, the Ghost Hunters guys are coming back. Mm-hmm. Ghost Nation. Ghost Nation. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a lot of cool paranormal choices right now. Yep. That's um, I think it's pretty interesting. It's almost to the point where we have to do a segment again. <laughs> I know because there's a lot of that's a lot of TV to watch. <laughs> it is. It is. But, you know, uh, we uh, Stacy and I have a lot planned, man. We have a whole lot planned uh, within the next 12 months. We're working on uh, some stuff and, and it's going to involve a whole lot of investigations. So if you have any suggestions for somewhere that we should go in the southeast um, mm-hmm. United States, that's we're purposely doing the haunted south i'll just say that so we're purposely doing places in the south mm-hmm. uh, if you have any little uh, place that's got crazy activity good history uh something like that that you know we should come investigate let us know please because um you know right now we're filling it up and mm-hmm. uh, we're trying to hit two big ones per month for the next 12 months so you know let us know and you know how to get a hold of us because you could always go to paranormalsideshow.com and find a way to get a hold of us, find a way to yes. do everything we talked about. But the one thing you can't do there is tell the future. This is true. And being that it's the mid-year, as mm-hmm. we were talking about, mm-hmm. you know, it's uh, got a friend. He's waiting in the green room. Ooh. Yeah. He, who is he, it? He, somebody that was really excited to see you. <laughs> I was going to bring him in here. I think you. I think you might remember him, uh, the great Antonio. Oh, yeah. is the great Antonio back? Oh, oh yeah, that's that's what I heard. So okay, well, bring him in. You All go. Right, hold on. You go. All right. 
Well, hello, pretty lady. Hello, great Antonio. Yes, yes, yes. It's the great Antonio. <laughs> I am the greatest of Antonios. The greatest Tony of all time. <laughs> Even better than Tony the Tiger. You know how I know that? Because I am a medium. Ah. <laughs> yes, I am a psychic medium. Mm, the yes. greatest. The greatest psychic medium. And I've got my spirit guide, Philip. He's an accountant. <laughs> he is, it's still Philip. Philip is here. He's, he still has his job. He still has his job. Philip's it's good a, to know. Philip's a, Philip's a good guy. He, he fills me up and uh, keeps me going and everything <laughs> from the other side. Uh, so I wanted to talk about... My predictions for 2019. Yes, the ones you made at the beginning of the year. Those ones. Mm -hmm. Those would be the ones. Are we going to check on them and see how you're going? I think that would be good. Okay. Because people like to know, you know, are you authentic? Are you, are you the real deal, Antonio? And right. I, Antonio is the real deal. Okay. So let's it's see absolute, how you're doing. You're looking ravishing tonight. Oh, thank you. I just cannot believe how pretty you are <laughs> it's it's oh, sorry the great okay, yes great antonio is getting a little hot and bothered <laughs> and it's uh this happens it's the it's the gift ah. it's the gift yeah because i know what you're thinking mm, uh, mm -hmm. i do i do <laughs> i'll tell you that later i'll read your palms um so we're looking here the great antonio first predicted for 2019 a chinese storm Mm -hmm. A storm in China. We right. went over this we already. We went over this once before. <laughs> that would have the highest record wins ever mm -hmm. on record. Do you know what happened so far? This is June 20 of 19. Yes. Do you know what happened in February? Was there a storm? There was a storm in February. Mm -hmm. And it happened to be a typhoon that had the highest ever recorded wins it was a super typhoon, not wow. just a typhoon, a super typhoon. It had you a cape. <laughs> you don't was, hear super typhoon. You don't very hear often. very much. No, no, especially here. It's from China. Um, but uh, you know, super typhoon, and and it's a little bit. It's the highest ever in the northern hemisphere what? in the month of February. That's that's pretty close. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 big. Yeah, it's that's big. big. It was bigger than a cat five. <laughs> They said it was a dog one, and <laughs> it, it was huge. It was big, big. Take it from me. All right, so then, then, this one, you're going to love this one. You're going to love, know you. You like the fighting. You like the, I like the fighting. You like the fighting, yeah. Yes, yeah. the UFC. Yes, you do. Get you a little, I can see you over there. I said, <laughs> God, I tell you, you're such a dame. You're so, yes. yeah, such a piece of work. All right, so in, the, in this, uh, Connor the Mac, mm -hmm. Connor McGregor, the great Irish hope. Mm-hmm. Um, I said in, in 2019, um, well, earlier in 2019, I said in January, mm -hmm. like, work with me here. I said back in January for my prediction for the great Antonio that Conor McGregor would have a triumphant return. And mm -hmm. at the time, people laughed and scoffed. Yes, because he announced his retirement. Yes, they did. But mm -hmm. it, I, as I came in here, I know that you told me what happened 15 hours ago. Yes, TMZ put up an article 15 hours ago that Dana White announced that Conor McGregor would be back to fight this year. This before year? Before the end of the year. In 2019. Yes, in 2019. Uh, you were correct on that yes, one. Yes, absolutely. I tell you, we're going to have to start some kind of uh, <laughs> thing on the YouTube uh, before they demonetize it all. And yes, but you'll have to wear a shirt if uh, you're in the video. Do you really want me to wear a shirt? No, no, but you know, you might have to I've wear a shirt. I've got the turban on. <laughs> I think I think I don't think that's where you wear a turban. Great oh Antonio. well, you know, you know, it's it's pretty pretty something that it that it stays up like that. Though. It's uh so anyway anyway you're getting the Antonio I'm all sorry. messed up. A good thing here. So there was also a, a prediction, another yes. prediction, okay. and 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 I'm not picking and I'm going in order. You are going in order. People can listen to this. They can go back to the first episode from these this year. Yeah, listen to absolutely your predictions. Yes. in the January. Mm -hmm. And what we have, I said that there was going to be some. A whirlwind in the politics and and what was going to happen was very unexpected an unexpected result everybody was going to kind of freak out because of an unexpected result with something in the politics mm -hmm. and it was going to really mess with people well that was the Mueller report it there was it go. was it was that it, was unexpected it was very unexpected well mm -hmm. to some people right to other people it's kind of expected it's <laughs> like hey yo but just saying. Right. There was an, there was some unexpected, and I don't think the unexpected's done. Just so right. you know, sweetie. I don't think the unexpected is done mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. I believe there's going to be some people in trouble. I don't think it's going to be the people they thought. 
I see. Just I saying. See. Just saying. Antonio, he's he's Antonio. Don't stay quite as down the center as you. <laughs> I'm just just letting you know. Okay. All okay. right. All right. And I'm not saying what side I'm on, <laughs> but uh, but I'm just saying. Then then Antonio has to see what his writing says here because it was it's a, it's a bit rough. Hold on a second. Wow, I don't know what that Antonio is going to have to use his psychic powers to figure out what this word. Oh no, I've got it. I've got it because you reached for it. <laughs> There's the power of you reaching for it. So Antonio said, "That's me." Antonio said because I'm a psychic medium mm-hmm. that in 2019. Sorry, it's sometimes mm-hmm. sometimes the spirits start talking, <laughs> and, and sometimes Philip gets he's like. Right in the middle of a sentence. I'm like, Philip, shut up. Go over in the corner. Right. Go stand over there. All right. So in 2019, there's going to be unrest in the cities. There's going to be the riots in oh, the, in the yes, cities. Yes, you did predict that. Yes, I did. In the major did. cities. I, in the major cities. Mm-hmm. In the sergeant cities. They're, they're all the cities <laughs> going to have going to have the unrest. And and we've had this with some, you know, certain... We, we won't get into the politics again, but we've had some political turmoils that Mm -hmm. some people agree with stuff and some people don't and some people with certain body choices and some people don't again of course we're only halfway through the year so yes yes and and i talked about you know stay out of the cities Mm -hmm. that's what antonio said so it's it's and i'm still saying that you know i believe Mm -hmm. that there's some still some unrest in the cities um if it goes to the awry you, you don't want to be in a in a big city. You want to be somewhere out with a cow. You want to be, you know, out there sitting on some hay or whatever. It's it's not Antonio's jam, but hey, Antonio likes to, like to, you know, walk still. So <laughs> it's good stuff. I mean, they, I, trust me, they're, they're after me first. So uh, the next one, this one, you're going to you're going to like this one. You're not going to like this is terrible, but it's it's still a good prediction. Okay. So I predicted that there would be European unrest. Mm. like nothing they'd seen right like it's going to be a lot worse mm-hmm. and and you you talk about the yellow vest right the the, the mm-hmm. paris france yes uh, i do believe you predicted that it would continually get worse throughout and, and, the year and, and, and it has and, and mm-hmm. so it's you know antonio would say media cover up on that if antonio got into that kind of stuff <laughs> and you could probably go look that up for yourself while you still can and just look up yellow vest protest and, and you'll find out a little bit but but Antonio doesn't get into those things. Right. But right, yeah, right. there's been a lot of European unrest. There has there's been. A lot of European there has unrest. been European unrest. Yeah, absolutely. And European nude beaches, too. You should, <laughs> you should come with Antonio sometime. <laughs> I mean, not for the nude part. It's a really nice sun there. Mm. It's, a, it's diff- a different sun. It's a different sun. <laughs> it, it is. You should you should come, pretty lady. Yes. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you that. But John's a lucky guy. Oh, absolutely. So uh, you get me again. I'm all I'm all messed up here. I got a little robot picture on my thing here. Um, so unexpected. <laughs> oh, this is one that hasn't happened. Okay. So there you go. All these hits, and, and and I got one. And funny enough, it's about a hit. So I said there would be an unexpected movie. Well, it's expected. Right. It's an expected. Movie. It's expected movie, an unexpected hit. Right. Like they didn't expect it to be a big it's hit. Not and happened it's a yet. Big hit. You don't it's think not, that one's happened? Not, yet. I don't think that's happened. Yet. Well, we still have six months. It's been to a go, lot of hits, so. and they've all been things they paid a lot of money to be hits. Right. So right. And then uh, the next one is this one's. This one's happening as we speak. Mm-hmm. The great Antonio from the other side. I pulled this one out with my great rope. Mm-hmm. And this one, this one hit me right in the noggin, and I'm very happy about it. I think you'll be very happy too. So I started talking about it. I had a weird quote. It was like the other side was being kind of pretentious that day, mm-hmm. and but the main thing was slow disclosure. Right. One of your favorite things. Yes. I said there would be something tiny. I said there'd be something. T- Antonio don't have anything tiny, <laughs> but Philip does. And and but I heard there would be something tiny that was that was going to be disclosure, but it's going to be something big. But just a little thing. And what it was is the little clip, right? Mm-hmm. You got the little clip, the little TikTok or whatever, mm-hmm. the little Tic Tac, the little Tic Tac UFO. Mm-hmm. So they're doing this unidentified show and it's all about it. And the, the Tom, the, the Tom of the long and all that. Right. And, and yeah, it's all about that. It's a little clip, little, little five second clip. They're doing a whole series on it. But what it is, it's actually from your government. Well, I believe that what you said was something to the effect of it would be they would give it out a little bit, but then it would turn into like mutual discovery. Right. Like they're trying to make it seem like mutual discovery. Absolutely. Which is what this show could be doing. And that's basically what I'll say to this is they were going to bring this out because this is a little nugget they can give you, a little nougat. 
and they were going to be like, oh, look what we found. There's some UFOs. But they've known about the UFOs since way back in the day. Antonio has to let you know that. I, mm-hmm. I hate to disappoint anybody out there, mm-hmm. but the Eisenhower had the treaty. He really did. <laughs> and and it's it's been going on for years and years and years. You know, so it's 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 one of those things. It's exactly, exactly. Antonio's proud of this one. Antonio's really proud of this one. Mm-hmm. Because that's going out on a ledge. That was going out on a ledge. And, and, I mean, slow disclosure, that's pretty. That's I mean, a pretty big prediction. I mean, I mean, to have something that was tangible. I was talking about something tangible. Like, I see a couple of tangible things over there. But <laughs> something tangible. And uh, then, you know, uh, there was another one. And it was more of a jokey one. But right. it, it was about a paranormal book. Oh, I yeah. believe that did happen. It did. It, it did. did had 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 one sexy, sexy lady on the <laughs> cover. There's some 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 mook on the cover too. But yes, you know. Well, well, great, Antonio. Since since we're halfway through the year and you've done so well on your predictions from the beginning of the year, oh, do, you have, one, yeah. do you have any other predictions for well, us? Well, just for you, if you ask like that, absolutely. If I Please? guess, a, oh, you don't <laughs> talk like that. I tell you what. Uh, yeah, you know, is he is he opposed to like you know t- somebody taking you out to dinner? I mean, <laughs> no, no. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> um, so anyway, we've got uh, um, well, we won't talk about that one. That one's scary. Um, so <laughs> let's let's go. Let me see. I'm gonna have to pull this one from the beyond. This is this. Uh, help me out here, Philip. Help me help me out. So the yeah, great Antonio, the great Antonio. Uh, I'm getting something from one of the listeners. One of the listeners of your wonderful show. Mm-hmm. This is this is for you. Yes, if you think this is you, this is you, and this is no joke. Okay, this is I don't joke about this stuff. I don't. That's why I sound so serious. You're considering switching jobs, and and this is this is specifically for one of your listeners. Mm-hmm. They've been considering heavily switching jobs because the job they have now is killing them, just mm-hmm. killing them. And the the the, the other side uh, saying to go for it. Maybe. And and I know this 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 goes for you and 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 you know what the other side is telling me if that was you you need to kind of give you you got to give the kids a, a heads up okay you're gonna have to send them a message <laughs> and just just let them know that it was you because um, Antonio is being serious here and um just just go for it go for it take take the take the nesty plunge and and just go ahead and do it that's what Antonio has to say and there's a, there's another one here you know. The, the, we got it's, there's lots of support groups out there on the internet. I think it's the greatest thing of the internet. I'm on a support group right now. It's a uh, psychic mediums that are underappreciated and don't have the pretty lady. Um, <laughs> it's, it's it's actually a thing. All right, everybody, Is that everybody, a big support group. Everybody has. Oh, wait, it's got to be pretty huge. Yeah, um, it's 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 huge. There, there's there's me and Philip, mm. and and mm-hmm. Philip's just there for company. Is because yeah. <laughs> I obviously don't have the pretty lady, but that's why I do good predictions. So I get to come back and keep seeing you. I I see, I see. It's a good lord. Where did you get those jeans? <laughs> that's uh, that's a, is that the uh, yeah, never mind. Um, nice jeans, nice Thank jeans. You. I like Thank to you. my compliments to the uh, to the fabric maker there. All right, so um, the next one we're going to go to. Oh, no, I was still doing one, we're still finishing. I was still okay. I'm listen, sorry. support group, yeah, that was all your fault. There's <laughs> uh, there's something to support it back there. So, uh, the support group, we have uh, another listener here. Another listener, and, and there's a connection you're going to make on, on this support group. You're, you're part of it. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel a lot better. People understand. And I get that. I absolutely do. But this is another one for the listeners. But thought, Antonio thought this time, you know what? Yeah, we'll do some for the listeners. So, um, yeah, go another go for it. Um, you got a deep connection going there with somebody and, and you, you need to say something. You need to just say something because you know what? You're not going to have more in common with anybody than what you got in common with with this one. You know what I'm saying? If you're both on this list, you know, it's it's if I ever have somebody else come on to, to, to my page, I'll leave you a link. <laughs> um, you know, I'll, I'll definitely have something there. All right. So the next one, this one, this one's going to be a big one. This one's going to be for everybody. Yep. Well, hopefully not an old fashioned serial killer. Now, I know some of you freaks out there, you love that, but, you know, that's why I'm doing it for you, Alan Marston. <laughs> but, uh, these, uh, the Antonio C's, uh, I've got the card on my head right now. This is not cool, but I had to tell you guys, an old-fashioned serial killer, but it's going to be like a political twist. And it's, it's definitely something that everybody will know about. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 that one's a big one and it's also scary. I'm sorry about that. 
Um, but definitely a, a serial killer, one that will remember the names. Um, that means they'll probably have a middle name. They will definitely have three names. Yeah, that's what that, it's part of it. It's part. Of, it's part. It's part of the job. So, so the great Antonio has another prediction. Okay. This one's good. I go from bad to good. Okay. Good. So this one, a unifying moment will happen for your nation. Ooh. Yes, a very unifying moment. That could be bad or good. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. This unifying moment is going to also go good or bad and could lead to a war of the civil kind. Mm. And just saying, uh, there is this moment, though, of of Antonio sees this, of, of some kind of unifying moment. Just... Go with it. It'll make sense in six months. I'm sure it'll make sense eventually. Um, Yeah. So something else that makes sense. This one, uh, if you ever seen the last one, this this one's talking about going out on a limb. It's uh, going out on a lightsaber. Um, So here, the great Antonio sees the Star Wars movie (laughs) actually being good. Ooh. Yes, Yes. Yes. The next Star Wars movie. Well, shut up, Philip. Philip, <laughs> Philip, like the last one. He's 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 a last Jedi fan. No. So no, yeah. Um, the next the next movie is going to be fantastic. Oh, good. Everybody's going to love it. Everybody's going to be happy about it. It's going to be incredible. Okay, good. So Star Wars will be saved. And 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 speaking of speaking of uh, incredible, so the great Antonio, please let her be part of this. The great Antonio sees there's going to be another major happening. It's going to be another nude hack. A nude hack? Yes. There's going to be a nude hack where people hack the nudes. You have on to the, explain to me what... Oh, and they... Yeah, on people's phones. Oh, they, they carry them around and they oh, take pictures of the Wawa's. I got and, you. And, 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 <laughs> They're JJ. Yes, and they, they, keep them on, they keep them on the cloud for some reason. Oh. And somebody's gonna hack that and release it. Yeah, they do it. They do it every few years. It's just, they, they call it the fappening. I, Antonio don't know anything about it. I don't know. Antonio knows nothing about it. Of course not. I have never seen any Jennifer Lawrence pictures. Right. I don't even know who she is. Do you know who's going to be hacked? Well, I am hoping that it's you. It's not going to be me. Okay. So other than you, no. Um, I don't. I know it's going to be big. Like celebrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to yeah, absolutely celebrity. I think it's going to I think it's going to be really big and also I think there's going to be somebody from like a news field that's going to be um it's going to be a big deal and, and very embarrassing for this news person. Obviously. So if you're a news person, you start deleting. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you, you, you go see Hillary, you get some bleach bit. Um so from what the Antonio hears. Um so yes, uh, I'm going to have to go you know on a big one here. Okay. Gonna finish this on something on on something gigantic. Okay. So this this one is uh this one is really big and and you know I don't even like talking about it because it's one of those that's you know it's kind of unfortunate. But the great Antonio mm-hmm. from beyond, from beyond, because I'm a psychic and a medium, mm-hmm. all together. The great Antonio is seeing a massive hurricane. Now that itself is not going on much of a limb. Right. But I'm talking this massive hurricane is going to be in a very unlikely place. Hmm. And and it's 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 not a common place, especially for one this powerful. Oh. So I, I that's that's the thing. That's the trigger right there. It's like a cat, a cat four. Um, it's going to come in. It's going to be a cat five um, right before landfall. And 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 it's going to hit somewhere that they don't they don't usually hit. So, yeah, and I'm not talking Alaska or something. I mean, right. it's going to be down southeast, but, you know, somewhere. But just, probably not Florida. Probably not Florida. <laughs> it's going to be one of the more unlikely ones. It's, I gotcha. it's been hit before. Right. Just one of the unlikely ones. But, yes, that's a going out on a limb. I've only got six months to fulfill this, and, mm-hmm. and hopefully it's not that bad, and everybody gets out of the way because they listen to the Grand Antonio. If they all they have to do is listen to the Grand Antonio. That's it. So now, pretty lady, you want to leave with me? And Well, I still have a show to do. I've got some news to talk about, so I'll have to stay here this time. But thank you for the invitation. Okay, well, you know... Uh, you need to take my card here, and uh, anytime you, you know, might want to wear those jeans again. And... <laughs> well, I'm sure I'll see you in six months. Okay, yeah. Well, uh, it's a, to, to, that card on the back has a Facebook link, so uh, uh, okay. I'll see you later. Ah, all right. Well, 
How'd that go? I never got to hear the last predictions. Oh, you'll have to just go back and listen to him on the episode. But he did pretty good. He he hit quite a few things. Some things, you know, it's still 2019, so some things haven't happened yet. But right. several of them got checked off the list. Right. And he gave us some new predictions for the still the rest of the year. Was it your hair in a ponytail when I left? Um, no. Okay. No, and my shirt was backwards. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was don't I didn't know about the buttons. And, <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, so. I think it's time for some paranormal news. She's the goat of paranormal news. Traveling the globe to find you the stories you didn't know you needed to hear and the stories she knows you'll never forget. It's time for Stacey Edwards and Paranormal News. All right, so let's get to the news. Let's. Is it hot in here? You think uh, it's hot in here? I, it's, it's, uh... Whew. A little, it's, little. I believe it's you. Yeah. All right. So let's start with this first story about. Now I know you saw these articles, and this is these are the articles about how the FBI has released its file on Bigfoot. Yes. This was a big deal because. Is it a big file? Uh, I, it's twenty-two pages. Wow. Does that constitute a big file? Maybe it's a file for every inch. I think it's a, like actual paper size. It's oh. Not, like physically big. Right. <laughs> but it was weird because the FBI doesn't normally. Right. You know, investigate Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not a normal thing. We've been joking about this lately with the Nessies and the Bigfoot right. and the UFOs. and. Right. So what happened is the 22-page file was made public because of a Freedom of Information Act Yeah, request. those four years. I know. And what the file shows is that the FBI agreed to test a hair sample that was attached to a tiny piece of skin. And the letters in the file and the link that I'm gonna, that I'll put up is when you go down to the bottom of the article, it shows a scan of every single page of the file. So you can look at the actual whole 22 page it's really gross. file if you want to. <laughs> I mean, it's just gross. What, the, the hair with the skin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the letters in the file show that someone was asking the FBI about samples that were supposedly tested because in 1975, there was a report in something called the Washington Environmental Atlas that referred to tests by the FBI laboratory in connection with the Bigfoot phenomenon. Right. So Peter Byrne, the director of the... <laughs> <laughs> you like that name? <laughs> it's so unfortunate. <laughs> the director, because <laughs> you know, in school, <laughs> it's like burn Peter and all his all his friends are like, ah, did you? <laughs> Sorry. The director of the Bigfoot Information Center wrote in a letter to the Can you FBI. Imagine the class reunion. <laughs> hey, look, it's little Peter Burns. Hey, uh, Peter, what are you doing these days? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the, I'm the manager over at the car lot. What are you doing? Oh, so I'm, 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 I'm in charge of the Bigfoot Society. <laughs> yeah. I was like, right, yeah, little Peter Burns, uh, Bigfoot, and that's. Uh, the, did you hear that, boys? Yeah, it's a really cruel world. It is. I it wouldn't is. do that. I think he's a of very great not. person. Of All right. course. Well, he wrote a letter to the FBI asking for them to inform them if the, if they examined some hair that was mentioned in that report and if it did, when it took place, what the results were, that sort of thing. But the FBI said it didn't have any record of conducting any tests like that. Huh. So in another letter that was addressed to him in 1976, it was dated December 15th, 1976, the assistant director of the FBI's Scientific and Technical Services Division, his name was Jay Cochran Jr., Right. he told him that as long as he understood that they don't normally do that sort of thing, that occasionally on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, in the interest of research and scientific wow. inquiry, they make exceptions to right. their general policy. Uh, and if he wanted to, he could send the sample in and they would test first it for First, we're going to give you this big line of excuses. Right, right. Uh, and, and you know, and make sure you realize that this isn't a normal thing. It sounds like but, being a musician, that sounds like when I would come to you with the tape and go, now listen, <laughs> we just started working on this. Mm -hmm. um, this is a rough draft. We weren't really trying on it, so my vocals are going to be a lot better <laughs> on the final version. And with this, the solo, we just kind of we we're screwing around with it, and right. you know, so yeah, this was like from across the room, actually in the next room in the next county. But um, <laughs> we're just going to let you listen to it to see what you thought, you know? Right? You remember right. all that? Yes, yeah, I do. That's what that reminds me of. So 
they told him to go ahead and send a sample in. So he did. And three months later, they reported to him that the hairs were of the deer family origin. Wow. That it was a deer. So it's kind of strange. He sent a rabbit in and they end up saying it was a deer. <laughs> basically, they said, you know, we don't normally, they were obviously worried about what he had. Right. And they were like, you know, we don't normally do this, but yeah, go ahead and send us your entire sample, everything you have. Give right. It, send it all. We'll tell you what it is. Right. And then it and took that's him, when Peter got burned. And <laughs> it took him three whole months to test it. And then they're right. like, it's a deer. Yeah. It took us three months to figure that out. Yeah, I could see him. I could see uh, him right now. We're just going to keep this. In my yeah, mind, <laughs> in my mind, out there somewhere in a great sequoia, mm -hmm. there, there's like a, all of a sudden you just see this picture, like picture it right now. Right. You see the woods, right? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you see Bigfoot like walking. Mm -hmm. And then you hear, ring, ring, <laughs> ring. Bigfoot looks around, left, right pulls the tree little the little <laughs> hidden component in the tree open right, right. The little tree door uh -huh. pulls the phone out mm -hmm. hello hey what's the big idea of living that skin sample <laughs> what were you doing <laughs> oh i didn't no not again is that what i'm touching right now <laughs> oh well yeah. do you have to do it so hard you leave the skin with the hair i mean what's what's wrong with you freaking freak Okay, I, I'm sorry. Okay, they're they're all working together. But well, in the interest of just interesting facts, there's another article about FBI and Bigfoot. Yeah, and the reason I'm I'm going to spoil a little bit. Uh -huh. The the reason this article is there now. Number one, mm -hmm. Stacy stated it, but I have to do my John stated. Mm -hmm. Okay, because sometimes John has to come on and be like, I know she just said this, but let me say it like a carnival barker. <laughs> um, so it's a really weird thing that the FBI had this stupid file. Right. And and it's a really it's like one of those things where they I, I truly with all of my heart and soul mm -hmm. believe that there's somebody in the FBI that's a practical joker and <laughs> smokes a lot of weed and watches Cartoon Network every night. Mm -hmm. And it's just like in there and finds this file on Bigfoot that where it's a deer sample mm -hmm. and just like, yeah, you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> yeah, screw all of them. Screw all of them. What are you doing, Turner? Shut up. McPherson, I'm. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna release this Bigfoot file. It's gonna make national news, <laughs> and everybody's gonna be like Bigfoot file, and then they're gonna read it. And it's gonna be a skin sample that was a, that was to a, a rabid deer, you know. So yeah, that's <laughs> the buttholes. But out of the buttholes mm -hmm. of them doing that, mm -hmm. which was so weird, our boy Nick Redfern yes. saves the day. He did. He wrote this really interesting article that I'll link to, and it talks about another instance in which the FBI was interested in a possible. Bigfoot, and he calls it the strange saga of the Minnesota Iceman. And I didn't know this story, so I'm just gonna, you know, bullet point the story for you here because it's pretty interesting. It's about a man named Frank Hansen, and he gained a lot of notoriety in the 60s because he acquired the deceased remains of an unusual a creature that appeared to be part human and part ape. Now, there's a lot of speculation in the beginning because the story of how he acquired it was not very well maintained. Like, at first they said he found it bobbing in a piece of ice in an ocean in Siberia. <laughs> but then there was rumors going around that it came from Hong Kong and was in a deep freeze and got smuggled to the United States. There was a story that went around rumors that it was shot in Vietnam and brought back by U.S. troops to the United States. Uh, some crazy. people said that it was shot by a hunter in Minnesota. And even some people said it was fake and it was made by a special effects creator that worked for Disney. Mm. So there was all these origin stories and nobody really knew exactly which one was true or where this creature came from. But regardless of where it came from, uh, it did get smuggled into the United States or found its way into the United States. Someone that is unknown like they have no idea who the benefactor was but someone with a great sum of money purchased it and had it brought to them in california 
And this individual made a deal with Hanson, with Frank Hanson, to have Hanson take it to fairs and show it and, you know, make it an exhibit and all across the United States and Canada. So when Frank Hansen received the body, he realized that it wasn't really a monster, that it was covered in hair and it was savage looking, but it looked very human as well. So of course, the people that studied cryptozoology uh, were very interested in it when they heard about it. And they asked if they could come take a look at it. So two highly regarded cryptozoologists, Bernard Huvelmans and Ivan T. Sanderson had an opportunity to T. Sanderson. come look at the body when there wasn't a lot of people around. It wasn't yeah. like at a state fair. And those were really big names. Both men were sure that what they were looking at was not a fake because even with the ice, they could still smell like that rotting that body smell. smell. Yeah. yeah. And they said the body didn't appear to be a dummy or some form of special effect. And they were very excited about that. Um, but soon, right after that, the body disappeared. And Hansen ended up having, he returned it to the owner and he was provided with a lifelike mannequin that looked just like it to show in its place. So he didn't have the original body anymore. He just had the mannequin. And the reason why they say that they made the switch was because that the FBI was looking into this creature and they couldn't figure out why but it made Hansen very nervous and there were rumors supposedly the FBI said that they were looking at it because it was possibly human mm -hmm. and there's laws against you know transporting and oh, showing yeah. human remains you know <laughs> Th then that's a legitimate reason for the FBI to be Do you know interested that happened? that happened a whole lot with old side shows it did. since we love shot shows I mean there's a lot of those that where they found out later on was some poor girl or something mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. well you know one of those crypt cryptozoologist felt like they didn't want the FBI sniffing around because they didn't they were afraid the FBI would come out and say that it was fake whether it was fake or not they would come out and be like oh yeah it's just a you know whatever and they didn't want to do that because you know they're using this in their show and they're making so when money did they it. stop uh, using that the body does it say that I don't know if I, I got that part of the story I have a um, real big reason why I'm asking it just says that he happily toured with it for years. It doesn't give me an exact date. So at our mall, mm -hmm. when I was a little kid, mm -hmm. I went to the mall every Tuesday with my grandmother and my mom. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Granny, my great grandmother. Uh, and that's she's the one that used to terrorize me with the stupid little freaking stupid freaking monkey <laughs> the one that gives yeah, you yeah the one with the little hat uh -huh. that that sucker looked at me i mean we were like eye to eye and he'd be like Meh. and, and, and they'd be like she'd be like give the monkey the penny you know here little john give the monkey the penny and i was like the granny has it and I'd, I'd hold the penny out in my hand right uh -huh. and that 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 vile Spider creature monkey. was like <laughs> Meh. and you just and you could feel his little claws in your oh god oh oh i wanted to boil that monkey I tell you that that part on Faces of Death, the first one where they're eating that monkey skull and at that table, right? I I watched that over and over and just thought about that stupid monkey. Anyway, so <laughs> the the now listen, I'm a huge fan of orangutans. You are. I love orangutans. Mm -hmm. I love gorillas, although they scare me to death. Um, but orangutans are like my thing, man. Like mm -hmm. I want to own one. He would he would have a little dopper on, sleep in between us. Right. I mean, just I love orangutans, and I actually love chimpanzees too. Mm -hmm. I think they're awesome. I don't like. I, I freaking hate spider monkeys. They, they and and I hate those bastard monkeys at those temples. The ones that just know you can't hit them, <laughs> and they're always like throwing poo, and like you can see the videos on Facebook where they just where they just drop kick people off motorcycles and stuff. Right. Yeah. You know what? Not me. <laughs> if it's a if it's a night in prison or whatever, I'm in Tibet. One of those little bastards slaps me. I'm gonna put him in a figure four. And, and, and you know what happens? One of those bastards submits. All those other monkeys are gonna be like, oh crap, <laughs> you know. So anyway, uh -huh. I couldn't live in one of those countries. I'm just saying. I just crap out of one of those things when they start <laughs> peeing on you from a tree the uh anyway so the reason i ask mm -hmm. when i was a kid and i was there at the mall they had the they had this missing link thing or this caveman and mm -hmm. uh see the amazing you know i think it was like a bigfoot type thing right i really do and 
I remember going to because I remember my 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 I, the grannies had a lot of airtime in this episode, <laughs> and especially like mean granny. I remember being like, "Oh wow, well, it ain't nothing, you know. It's, it's it can't be a million years old. I mean, it's only the world's only forty five years old or whatever." Um, so. <laughs> It um you know it was really cool though I remember I didn't get to spend a lot of time there they they didn't want me to look at it uh-huh. but I kind of walked by you know I'm like oh hey and it was scary as hell because <laughs> I mean it was like so it looked like some like thing and like the fingers up you know right like, right and I'm like oh, well it's my. supposed to scare you well, that's yeah. the point well I'm always afraid when I'm looking at stuff like that like even in a wax museum that something's gonna move right. And wax museums creep me. Oh out. man, I hate that stuff. Mm-hmm. I hate anything that looks like a. It's like humanoid. Right. I don't like no matter what we ever get. Uh-huh. The suit of armor is about as far as I'll go. <laughs> but I, anyway, that's an interesting story. While we're on Bigfoot, mm-hmm. we don't get to talk about this very much. So it's kind of like watching ancient aliens when you're when you're listening to us because, it, you know, you'll be talking about this one thing and they'll be like, that kind of reminds us of 1929 <laughs> Sicily. Very cool. My favorite Bigfoot uh, story. Mm-hmm. Sounds, like, sounds like a sitcom from the 80s. <laughs> My favorite Bigfoot. My favorite Bigfoot story is one of the coolest, I, I believe, that there's ever been. Uh, back in May of 1980, when Mount St. Helens erupted, uh-huh. and you know, that was such a, it was such an amazing moment in the country, because it, you don't, we don't have things like that in the United States. You know, there's just not a lot of the same things that happen in, in other places. Like, and one of those big things is volcanoes and, mm-hmm. you know, things like that. So Mount St. Helens blew the whole freaking top off and um, killed so many people and the big landslides. And, you know, it was, it was a huge tragedy. Mm-hmm. Well, the story is there were all kinds of Bigfoots mm-hmm. that were, that were killed during this. And some were, you know, horribly burned and some... And there's stories from eyewitnesses, sheriff's department people and stuff, because you had a lot of people out there of the military choppers where they saw military choppers with huge nets underneath Mm -hmm. carrying these Bigfoots and and away Mm -hmm. from the scene. I remember hearing something about that story. And it was like, it was like, I mean, several, and I'm sure like a Nick Redfern or a David Weatherly or a right. John Tenney would be able to tell me exactly what the, what the Bigfoots names were. And, right. You know, the dates. Yeah. And that was Harry Lloyd and Jimmy, you know. Astrological um, signs and all that. Right. But, but the story mm-hmm. itself is very cool. And I do know there were some eyewitnesses and, you know, I think it's a bit taboo to just make up something from something. So many people died. You know, it don't seem like something you would just, you know, like. Right. And right. plus other people were there that mm-hmm. could corroborate whether or not you've seen this. Right. Um, I wish somebody would look into that more. I like that needs to be an episode somewhere mm-hmm. while witnesses are still alive mm-hmm. about them carrying off this. And if we'll they look into that and if they were, mm-hmm. why? Why do they hide it from us? Yeah, I don't know. That, that would be weird. That's my question on so much of this. Mm hmm. They, they hide the UFO stuff from us, right? Mm-hmm. They hide the Bigfoot stuff from us. They hide all these things from us, okay? And there's no way that all of this is make-believe. There's not. There is no way with all the witnesses we have and all of the... We know that it's not. We know that it's not. And you can even look now with the UFO stuff. They're like, hey, the our own government caught this, and there's no way in hell that could be anything from this earth Mm -hmm. and they're just saying it yeah but you know it's so weird to me that um you know it's like why do they hide so much stuff from Mm -hmm. us if there's not something they're hiding it for right there's a channel we watch that i love on youtube as long as it's still there Mm -hmm. called bright insight Mm -hmm. and that's just the name of the channel and and i've watched it since its inception really and and it's very interesting because it really goes into a lot of uh, ancient Egypt stuff, you know, and, and I think I've linked to that channel before. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And he feels the same way we do about most of your Egyptologists mm-hmm. um, and what they're really hiding and, and why and all that stuff. But this recent one that makes me think of it about the hiding stuff, it's amazing. And you're going to have to link to this video because here's the thing in the video, which is at now two weeks old. Mm-hmm. Okay. He talked about, I can't believe this hasn't made national news, worldwide news. Mm -hmm. Um, he's like, you're going to be amazed that it's not made worldwide news. And here's the thing. Two weeks after this video, because it's still nothing, right? Right. 
and and it should be it should be a major story so in the temple of hator mm-hmm. okay and hator she was the mother of ra the cosmic mother mm-hmm. um anyway her depiction is already strange this 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 temple of hator is it's one of the most amazing things you ever see like the colors the the hieroglyphs the petroglyphs the mm-hmm. i mean it's just amazing and it's it's all through this place and there's these huge 50 foot columns yeah there's actually like a bunch of them. 24 mm-hmm. 24 50 foot tall columns inside mm-hmm. and they're all carved all the way up and everything and it tells the stories on the walls and but there's these depictions of of her right there's mm-hmm. these depictions of a tour but it's so weird because she doesn't look like any other woman in ancient Egypt that has been you know made into statues or or paintings and anything mm-hmm completely they they say john anthony west the 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 famous egyptologist he said you know hey that's more metaphoric you know or right but they don't they don't really know they don't do that either right so even the weirder part which makes this weirder about her and this is not even the story but all of her faces Mm -hmm. on all of these columns have all been defaced Mm -hmm. so the nose part Mm -hmm. in every one of them has been ripped off that's weird it's, I don't know if she had a clown nose or a horn. <laughs> well, I would think that would be the most delicate part of a facial statue, really. Yeah, the but, nose. but the thing is, these are all inside mm-hmm. and nothing else is even messed up. Like the right. walls still have the blue oh, paint. Oh, yeah. I, I, it was purposefully yeah, yeah. defaced. Right. I mean, she yeah. has cow ears, too. Like, Yeah. Uh, there's a lot about it that's strange. There, there is a lot that's strange, but that's not that's not even the strange part. It's, uh, it's just I'm trying to talk about how amazing this is. Mm-hmm. places in How the first place and amazing and 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 looked at mm-hmm. okay because it also is one of the places that has the very controversial hieroglyphs uh mm-hmm. with the um you know ufo or the one that looks like a helicopter mm-hmm. things like that right right so this woman was on a tour of egypt this past may and she was friends with the bright insight guy mm-hmm. so or you know, or a viewer or whatever. And she went on this tour, but she didn't take like the big bus with the 50 people. And she actually went on more of a private type tour with a small number of people paying a very educated tour guide. Mm -hmm. And this tour guide had all these connections. Right. Right. That's the way to do it. Absolutely. This guy is, I can see him being some shady, dirty, you know, (laughs) wearing the brown jacket and the white shirt and the half shaven beard and, Mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the gold chains. Uh, Absolutely. This is legal. This is legal, you know. (laughs) Um, But regardless, he was able to be be like, hey, you know, I'll take you in here in this pyramid. People can't go in here normally. Mm -hmm. All this stuff. So he took them in there and they're working on the floor. Right. So what just happened and he showed them Mm -hmm. is um, they were working on a floor stone. Mm -hmm. And of course, this whole thing is made of stone. So all these even the floor stones like, you know, I don't know, a million pounds, Mm -hmm. but they moved it. And there's four pictures, four pictures she took of this. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. So you got to think heavy as hell, huge temple, 24 columns, 50 foot tall. Amazing, amazing, amazing floor stone. And you're looking down at columns, mm-hmm. more columns mm-hmm. that nobody has ever known about. And it looks as if there might be 24 or 50 foot columns underneath. Right. But they, I mean, they don't know. There's just the, all you can see is the you, one you section. Could, you could see, the, but more than one column. Right. Right. Definitely more than one. But still yet, mm-hmm. this is huge. This is a, a this is one of the most famous places in Egypt. This is a huge discovery nobody's ever mm-hmm. known about before. Mm-hmm. And wouldn't you think that at least like National Geographic. Right. Or they would be like, oh, look what we discovered and we're going to excavate. Yeah, it and let's blah, blah. do it on live TV. Right. 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 But you don't get that. Now, why do you not get that? I personally think and and, and I'll get off this after I tell you. And, and, and you know what? I really am going hardcore on this one. I think that the pyramids, I think that the Sphinx um, uh, and when I say the pyramids, I mean the three pyramid, the, the great pyramid. Mm-hmm. I think that that predates the ancient Egyptians as we know them. I think that that stuff was here already. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of the great temples in the world were here already. 
I think the Stonehenge was here already. I just, I just think that, you know, that I, uh, yeah, aliens, whatever I talk about, man came up and fell and there's been several ages of man. Um, it just seems right. There's too much high technology that we find from a hundred thousand years ago. That doesn't make sense. You know, like, oh, hey, here's our, our toilet plunger. And, you know, and it, we found out it's two million years old. Mm-hmm. And these little things just go unnoticed or people don't think about them that much because it's inconvenient. But with Egypt, you know, it, it's it still goes back to the point that there's never been a body. There's not it's not a, t- a burial tomb. Right. In the mm-hmm. Great Pyramid. I think this is one of those things we just we don't know because it. I think they built around it. Like you look at the pyramids that came later, mm-hmm. they're cool, but they're nowhere near. It's like they, you know, did they lose all their ability? Did <laughs> that, you know, cause it's normally like trying to make copies and well, they can't, how does it normally work? If you go from 1850 mm-hmm. to now, okay. Has, ha, have we went back in how well we can build buildings? No, we we've progressed. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's just, common sense that you would think that they would have been able to keep progressing right but instead they regressed horribly Mm -hmm. and and that's why i think there was some kind of high technology and somebody put those there and and for a purpose Mm -hmm. and when people get close to ufos when people get really close to ufos and i'm thinking rendlesham forest what's the one thing that they that they talk about that they'll see on the ufo they'll they'll see the hieroglyph Mm -hmm. okay Mm -hmm. that's really Again, that's strange. And a lot of times when you hear people, you know, I was in the space and I seen that they were using the hieroglyphs. It's a weird thing. Then you look at the, you know, up there on that moon of Mars, you've got the obelisk, right? Mm-hmm. And um, it, it's things like that. Um, it looks like you can see pyramids on, on Mars and stuff like that. I think it's all connected. Mm-hmm. But I think that's why they don't want us to know. I think that's why this story hasn't come out, which should have come out by now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's why when... They find things like Bigfoot. I think there are people that protect inconvenient truths Mm -hmm. because they need to control us. I'm not saying religion isn't real. I'm not saying any of that. And I want to make that a real point as I say this, because I, you know, I, I do firmly believe in a higher power. I believe in, in this. Okay. But I'm also saying that you have to keep your mind open to the fact that somebody may have put something together to help control you. Right. And and if you don't do that, then you're not really given all scenarios. Mm-hmm. And, and you, you got to, especially in what we do, especially in paranormal investigating or in, in we investigate mysteries of the unknown. That's what we should actually put our title as because it's not just ghost. And in investigating these things, you have to look at every side. And I don't know how you cannot look at the fact that it doesn't always have to go back to biblically. Okay. It really don't. There can be things that were misinterpreted. There can be, I mean, it's okay to believe in a higher power and still think that they're trying to not let us go out. I mean, because what happens when they say, well, and I'm, I'm speaking in the hypothetical, but what happens if it comes out like, hey, you know, we wrote that to keep you guys in line, like in 1000 years, mm-hmm. you know, like like 100 A.D. We decided, hey, it feels like the Roman Empire is kind of falling a little bit. Maybe we should do something to get all these people in line. Right. You know, it's it's just the fact that it feels like they're they're keeping something from us, even when the Library of Alexandria was burned. Mm-hmm. I would love to know what was there. The Vatican archives. Right. Okay, you can't go down there. Mm-hmm. You and I cannot go down there. No, you have to have like super special secret powers to get in there. And then you have, to, and, and this is the thing, you have to know the book you're going for. Right, you have to know what you want. Like you can't just go down there and find Browse. knowledge. You have yeah. to know what you're looking for. And if you know what you're looking for, it's not mm-hmm. hidden. Right. Uh, somebody knows it exists. Right. So the stuff that is down there, mm-hmm. okay, why is it so hidden from us? Why... You know, even if they didn't want us to touch it because, you know, our little grimy hands might ruin it. Mm-hmm. Why couldn't we have an online catalog of everything that's down there 
So maybe, you know, we could see pictures online or maybe they could, you know, digitally put it up. And even if there um, was just a list of topics. So, yeah. So if you are studying something in particular, you can see if the Vatican Library has something yeah. about that topic. Yeah. And, and, and what if they had experts there that even if you had to book it two years out, mm-hmm. that you get to go with, you know, Peter and um, he's one of the experts and he'll take you down to that thing. You yes. look that in the catalog and he handles, he handles it, mm-hmm. but you may be able to sit there at a table while he carries an Uzi. I don't care. Yeah. You know, they could make a lot of money that way. They, they could, mm-hmm. they could. I would, if I had a catalog mm-hmm. and I would pay upwards of $10,000, honestly, mm-hmm. to be able to go in there. If I seen something in that catalog that I've always wanted to know about, mm-hmm. you know, if there was some book in there that was just, taboo as hell you know and and you know like they think this was pinned by the devil on a late october <laughs> night i mean seriously right i would read it mm-hmm. i don't care what people think mm-hmm. that stuff interests me the book that was pinned by overnight right by that monk mm-hmm. that you know said the devil you know yeah i would love to have that and yeah, it, just a copy of just it that'd, to, be, that'd be awesome just to read it or touch it i want to mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. not, that stuff interests me mm-hmm. and and i don't care what people think I, and it it also interests all them that's mm-hmm. why they hide it right right and you know um well i want to go back to that video you were talking about because we didn't even get to the one of the most disturbing parts of the video mm. was that at the end the tour guide told her because she was taking pictures that they were going to put the stone back until they could excavate it in secret you know i forgot all about that part yeah like at the end he actually told her that yeah he told her like off the record i guess or whatever that, yeah. that they would because she i guess she inquired about you know what, what you they were going to do this? now yeah and he's like no no they'll come back and excavate this you know without anybody knowing and then maybe they'll explain, which is very disturbing. And that was what he was talking about in the video when he said that the reason they didn't release it to the media and and how disturbing it was. And that is disturbing that they're going to excavate something so potentially amazing yeah. in secret. And hide it from us. And then decide what they want to tell Well, that's or because not what happens when mm-hmm. they go down there and there is a sarcophagus and that sarcophagus is potentially, you know... Mm-hmm some kind of gray alien right um some kind you know that was a ruler back then right um i don't think it was the grays as much as maybe reptilians because there's a lot of those depicted Mm -hmm. um but i do believe it was aliens i do and so what we have to watch for is any kind of renovation going on right at that temple absolutely i think we need to check on that and maybe even send a complaint like Mm -hmm. you know it, it just get something on record you know i'm sure people's done it already but right um not that they would care but you know right. whatever <laughs> you know something really interesting in that video because he's he's so smart but he tells you the stuff you don't hear or you don't read in the textbooks mm-hmm. there was a matriarchy during this time this was the old kingdom mm-hmm. and you know it was like oh the ancient egypt i mean i know it's all ancient egypt but it was like the old kingdom is what they were talking about and it was actually ruled with a, a bunch of priestesses like mm-hmm. i mean throughout mm-hmm. that period right it, like before they went to the pharaoh system. right right i mean it was it was ruled it was you know with women mm-hmm. and and it was very but they don't ever talk about that no which is very interesting that is you know we is. talked about before not to get all girl power on everybody but before they were all witches and we burned them the the local healer in a village was the most important person in that village mm-hmm. she birthed all the babies she um, had, she knew which roots you could eat and which ones would kill you. She knew what to give you for sickness. She, mm-hmm. you know, she was that person that was basically your doctor. Right. Um, and also the wise person that, that knew little things. And, 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 you know, if you, if you're the one that birthed every baby in that village, you're a very loved person, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what came along to change that, but probably somebody who didn't want their power to be you know questioned or right not again not <laughs> not pooping on the padre right just saying just saying that it that's a little nugget in history mm-hmm. that is kind of interesting mm-hmm. you know look up some of the old english stuff too um and and ireland and stuff and some people that may have gotten waste it with their magical beliefs <laughs> you know there was when some romans came on uh, came onto the island and you know, some crazy stuff and, and they didn't know what to do because the loyalty mm-hmm. that was shown, you know, and they, they're, 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 you know, some of the great 
in history, there was like, I don't understand how they're so loyal. And it was like, because they're, you know, they'll turn you into a newt. I mean, <laughs> but just cool stuff. And I know we got off a little off topic, but it's us. So that's okay. Well, let's move on yeah. to the next story. All right. So this is a story about, and I believe we, we spoke about this last year and I don't know if you'll remember, but we talked about how some people were going to start doing DNA sequencing in the Loch Ness to see if anything came up that might suggest that there could be a Loch Ness monster. I do not remember that. And I remember it was just one of our stories on one of our shows. And I think we talked about how interesting it would be that they were going to do this. So there's a story out now saying that the Loch Ness monster study results are, quote, surprising. Really? Yes. They've been doing this for the past year. And it's a New Zealand scientist named Professor Neil Gemmel. And he, you know, was using DNA sampling techniques to find out whether there was any scientific basis for there to be a monster legend, or if maybe they were just going to find that it was a big, you know, catfish, right, or whatever. It's a good, it's a good, good idea. Board. It was a good idea. Yeah. So from the findings that they've released so far, they've managed to identify the DNA of 15 different species of fish and about 3,000 species of bacteria. Oh wow! And it says among other things. And, you know, they asked him if there's anything really deeply mysterious. And he said, you know, it depends on what you believe. And he said there were a few things that were a bit surprising, but we actually have to wait until next month to find out what his surprising discovery is. This is just some of the preliminary things that they've let out. But they are uh, going to do some kind of big reveal on whatever this surprising That's evidence really cool. is that they found. Especially since they're actually putting it out there. I mean... Mm-hmm. That's really cool, man. Yeah, so he's not saying that they found DNA from, like, a dinosaur or whatever. Sort of sounds that way, don't it? it does, he does make it sound like one of them might be some kind of monster type creature. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, very interesting. I'm going to have to keep track of, it doesn't say in here when exactly they're going to. Hopefully it's a news conference. Yeah, I'm hoping it's some kind of press release or something, so that's easier to find. Stacey always always makes such a big deal, like... When it's NASA news conferences or anything like that, she's so cute. I'll I'll call her from work or whatever, and I'll be like, "What are you doing?" And you can hear her with her snacks and stuff. She'll be like, "Oh, I'm watching this news conference, and <laughs> it's it's the it's the one today they're going to talk about, you know, whatever." And she's the poor little thing. I'll watch like a two hour news conference where they tell like two seconds of news, but <laughs> it's, I don't always make it through the whole thing. But, yeah, you know, I get the gist of it. Yeah, pretty cool so. though. All right, well, let's continue. And kind of on the same vein of monsters, Ah. there's a story about a giant reptile found by Argentine paleontologists in Antarctica. Wow. Yeah, so this is, and I didn't know this was a thing, the Argentine Antarctic Institute. No, I didn't know that was a thing either. They conducted some research on this giant fossil that they found right and it's called a a lasmosaurid Uh and initially the fossils were found in in 1989 but they had to continually send teams down there to work on it and it was only entirely recovered (laughs) something like that it was only entirely recovered in 2017 because it's so massive and the reason it's so amazing is because it weighs between 10 and 13 tons they're saying now that they've studied it that it weighed between 10 and 13 tons and this particular creature normally only had a mass between five and six tons so this is like the biggest one they've ever found on record and they said that it you know developed some unique eating strategies to help it grow in size and they're really proud of the fact that they've gotten this entire sample out. And the if you look at the picture, it looks like uh, what a Loch Ness monster would look like. It's that family, that plesiosaurus kind of with the fins and the long neck. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's, I mean, yeah, it looks. Yeah, she's showing me right now. Mm-hmm. It looks like the freaking Loch Ness monster. And it's really amazing that they were able to get the entire specimen out i mean it's not it's not complete complete but the fact that they got this huge specimen out took them that long yeah but uh yeah so i learned a lot of things i learned that argentina has an argentine antarctic institute apparently and that now they found this gigantic fossil which they're amazed with so no it's it's pretty uh, cool that is really cool especially like you said with the uh, nice segue, you know. <laughs> right. So right, here's right. what it is. I'll tell you something cool too, and this mm-hmm. is com- this is I I think this is news. So you and I both absolutely adore Ghostbusters, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. first Ghostbusters. Yes. 
So they only made one Ghostbusters movie. Mm -hmm. That's all they made. They didn't make Ghostbusters 2, Ghostbusters 3. (laughs) They they sure as hell didn't make that remake. Right. So me and Stacy, when we don't like something, we just put it out of our minds. Yes, it didn't exist. It never existed. So I was going to tell you, Mm -hmm. I I guess you've heard about, you know, the Jason Reitman, Ivan Reitman's son, Mm -hmm. that Ivan Reitman, who obviously famously did the first Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. His son has a screenplay. Uh, for the new Ghostbusters film and that's going it's going forward they're making it mm-hmm. and people want to get mad and be like blah 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 you know you didn't like the one with the females and you're just you're so nistic pig and all this no you know what it sucked you know I didn't it, really like it it was horrible it sucked it wasn't the females mm-hmm. that didn't bother me at all I loved most of the girls that was in it mm-hmm. and, and I mean there were some funny girls in there in a bad movie and the problem was is the original Ghostbusters was so good yeah that yeah, it was, the reboot just it just didn't really hold up it was that great, tradition and, and they couldn't just make a movie with girls they had to make a movie of girls that had to be a statement and it had mm-hmm. to have the dumb guy and it had to right you know that's what I hate when people do stuff like that mm-hmm. I don't care that they change stuff I just wish they would well, let it be you know yeah well you know it's like we watched that um that oceans 13 movie yeah. that had all women in it yeah. that was amazing i love that movie that was a great movie i really love that movie yeah and i don't care what people now if people didn't like that it's because they didn't give it a chance no no that was a, they, actually know, a really good movie there really are people out there that won't give stuff a chance <laughs> there really are yeah. but um you know what i'm getting at is this ghostbusters movie mm-hmm. i gotta talk about this okay so bill murray famously would never really do anything again Mm-hmm. with the you know he I don't think he even wanted to do the second one you know he's kind of like left it alone ever since and mm-hmm. Dan Aykroyd it's always been his labor of love because he's you know he's a paranormal guy he's a he he's is. a ghost hunter mm-hmm. uh, alien hunter he's yeah he's big on the aliens dude he is he is just as weird as us mm-hmm. so the big story going on this week is Bill Murray's in the movie he signed on oh wow so Bill Murray Dan Aykroyd are in this movie done by Jason Reitman. And Bill Murray says, yes, it's funny, but it's scary, too. Is it going to be... It's uh, a straight sequel. It is from the first one. From the first one. Oh, that's awesome. And and it gets better. Mm-hmm. Sigourney Weaver today uh-huh. is going to be in it. Oh, that's fantastic. So, yeah, I was looking up about the Bill Murray thing. Mm-hmm. And, and as of today, it's like Sigourney Weaver signs on. Great. It must be really good then. Yeah. Because you know they wouldn't sign on unless it was... Oh, it's just so cool, man. Mm-hmm. I, I, it's, that's really, really cool. I hope Rick Moranis gets... It mm-hmm. wasn't he the one, the gatekeeper or yeah. whatever. Yeah, So I'm going to have to watch the movie again because I'll tell you what, that, that first one could have been a comedy, but the librarian scared oh the gosh. poo out of me. It did. Me it, too. The first time I saw that mm-hmm. and she was like, I jumped. You know, <laughs> that was... But I loved it. I loved it. And, and mm-hmm. um, so Dan Aykroyd is also written another script mm-hmm. for young them like, oh, like when, young ghostbusters yeah like when they were in high school or whatever but paranormal investigating well yeah because when that when the original ghostbusters opened they're already at the college yeah. doing the psychic research right. and the ghost research and you don't really know how they got into that right exactly that's cool so he, that's cool. he I, like I don't that. i don't know if it's just college or high school and mm-hmm. whatever but it, it'd be awesome and funny mm-hmm. and oh, especially yeah, if you wrote it so anyway that's i thought that uh, that really excited me so mm-hmm. does uh ivan reichman's son does it look does he look like him i don't know i didn't look curious mm. okay well, that sounds cool. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. All right. Well, let's continue. I got one more dinosaur story here. And this is about uh, some gem-like fossils that are actually a new dinosaur species. Wow. Brand new. And these were um, unusually colorful fossils that were found in Australia. <laughs> and Good they name. were found, they have a lot of opal mines. I love opals. Oh, Jesus. Opals are amazing. Is that where they mine opals at is yeah, Australia? I guess so because uh, it says there's this place called Lightning Ridge and so this man named Bob Foster he is an opal miner mm-hmm. what a cool job yeah he found the fossil in 1986 it's another one that has been found a long time ago and scientists at the Sydney's Australian Museum helped Foster excavate and you know the dinosaur bones it was embedded in the rock and then they took it to the museum but then nobody studied it it just sat there languishing for 15 years uh, that and then pisses me it off. was put on display at the sydney opal store because most of the fossils were still in the rock and eventually bob foster was like you know i kind of want to 
figure out what that is. And so they took the rocks and they took the bones that were already excavated and they used a CT scanner to kind of look at the bones without having to dig them out of the rocks. And what they found was it that the remains not only belonged to just one dinosaur, but it was a herd or a family group of dinosaurs. And this is the first time they found a herd or a group of dinosaurs in that country, in Australia. Wow. And it says they also represent the most complete dinosaur fossils yet found preserved in opal. Wow. And I guess it gives them this, the opals give them that, you know, gem-like Wouldn't you love to went to that opal store before he knew that and bought those? (laughs) I know, that'd been awesome. Well, they named the dinosaur after Bob Foster. So it's Fosterosaurus? Like, Bob Foster's wife was like, allowed to pick the name for the dinosaur because it's a brand new species so it's called a fostoria which is after foster and the second name is like it's an aboriginal name so i'm going to butcher it i apologize but it's like him which means sheepyard because the area they found is like him <laughs> him <Him-bang-a-mall. laughs> it's like like a sheepyard locality where it was found uh, a sheepyard that's what like way back in aboriginal times right. it was that where that mine was what used to be a sheep yard so his so. name's he bang them all and he is at a sheep yard no the name of the dinosaur listen close it's okay. fostoria dim bang them all dim bang them all it starts with a d okay yeah i got you yeah i bet it did start with the d his wife bob foster's wife is aboriginal yeah oh. and so she picked a word from her culture oh okay yeah sorry about that <laughs> and then the fostoria is for foster so Aborigines. it's a very nice name degree do <laughs> but it's cool that they got to uh pick the name it's an iguanodon like dinosaur it lived about 100 million years ago and just awesome plant eating dinosaurs and they found a whole herd brand new dinosaur that really is cool it is very cool cool for australia All right, so let's move on to some space news. Space news. So this is a really interesting story about some scientists who are set out to study the mysterious flashes of light on the moon. Oh, like the the little bomb looking things over on the sides and (laughs) Yeah, like there's places on the moon that's sporadically like get brighter. Yeah. And they don't really know what that is. So these scientists have set up a remote controlled telescope. Uh, at a private observatory in Spain. And it's a couple of cameras, like two cameras, and if they register a flash of light simultaneously, then the photo and video sequences of the event are stored and sent in an email back to these scientists that are in Bavaria. Wow. So that they can take a look at that footage and try to come up with an explanation. I think that a long-running theory is that perhaps it's uh, meteor strikes things like that but you know there's all the conspiracy theories out there about the lights on the moon and moon bases and you know ufos and all those different things and there is one theory that perhaps it's seismic activity that makes gas escape that reflects sunlight you know there's a lot of different possibilities so they're hoping that if they have dedicated cameras looking at the moon recording every instance of when this happens long term that they can come up with a better you know more solid theory I wonder if they can also tell us about lunar wave i don't know and see i was curious about that about if that would be observed but if that's not something that triggers the camera then it's probably not something they're even going to see because they're not going to sit there and watch the camera footage constantly it's just going to take the video and you know footage of the times that it's i've always hated that on like paranormal investigations when people mm-hmm. set the camera for motion mm-hmm. uh, I, I, it's drove me nuts for years <laughs> i i feel like that you miss mm-hmm. actual paranormal activity mm-hmm. because it's the motion's not going to pick it up or right or it's so quick mm-hmm. you know i i don't i hate the motion capture stuff mm-hmm. just on a side note i just do you you know we've captured some amazing video things that we never kept and that's a big regret of mine mm-hmm. walking down the that one hallway and we had the it was like a bean and it was the legs and mm-hmm. it was walking toward us and um, I wish we'd have kept some more of that video um, we, we didn't do a very good job of chronicling not, our video not with the video because we concentrated more on the audio, audio. so yeah. yeah we can really tell you a good audio story but <laughs> Well, to continue the space news, there is a story going around now where ammonia on Pluto 
hints at a massive hidden ocean that could support life. Wow. On Pluto. Yeah, well, Pluto's like, well, what do you think about me now, yo? Yeah, am I a planet yeah. now? Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's planet. <laughs> so astronomers have detected the presence of ammonia mixed in with like the rusty coloration of Pluto's surface because, you know, it has those little rusty looking areas. Pluto's making some cheap cocaine. <laughs> well, what makes it a surprising sort of discovery is that ammonia doesn't last long. Like in cosmic terms, ammonia right. doesn't last long out in the open in the solar system okay because ultraviolet light and cosmic radiation kind of degrade it relatively quickly but we're talking about like millions of years i mean it takes a long time we're talking cosmic okay, terms all right. pluto is billions of years old oh. so something had to create that ammonia or put it there there has to be a reason for it so now that makes that completely an interesting story it does. that went from being oh hey there's ammonia on pluto mm -hmm. to there's ammonia on pluto and it shouldn't be there right right that's i mean that's the vibe i'm getting from this particular article and you know so it's what just, if like a spaceship landed there i mean you know i mean just saying yeah. just you know uh, what if it's a spaceport of some kind? That's crazy. I, I mean, it could be anything. And it says that uh, it adds to the growing body of evidence that supports liquid oceans below Pluto's frigid surface. And right. even though it's so cold there, a theory was put forward in a paper that maybe there's a layer of gas trapped beneath Pluto's surface ice that could be insulating that water and keeping it from freezing and, you know, being melted by the core. And perhaps there could be God. some kind of life Can there. Can you imagine what a Plutonian fish? Could, I mean, <laughs> that'd be weird. You, you think it? about, you know, like those rock fish, you know, at the bottom of the ocean sometimes you mm -hmm. see those cameras, right? Right. And it's in the very dark and they're, they're very nasty, creepy looking mm -hmm. fish. Like, I call them rock, um, rock fish. They kind of look like a rock till they move. Kind of. Right. I see it being like that, like, right, you know, right. something really, because it's so far out there. Yeah. Well, that's not something we're ever, I mean, how long is it going to be before we can actually, you know, investigate something on Pluto? That's, that's crazy. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> at the, I mean, the way things are going, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you never know. I mean, Very true. it's going to take one person figuring out speed of light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Well, continuing with the space news, I will just mention this one. It says there's a vast new reservoir of water ice that's been found beneath Mars's North Pole. Oh, come on So now. here you go. More water ice found on Mars. What? We, hmm. <laughs> we went literally from right? there is no water in the universe mm -hmm. to the freaking ice pirates. I mean, yep. it's and especially freaking Mars. It's like a skating rink. I know, I know. And it said, even the scientists that did this study, and they're talking about, because they know that there's, you know, water ice on the surface in the polar ice caps, but that it's the presence of glaciers beneath the surface, which is something that the scientists speculated about, and now their presence is confirmed. So, and they're like caches of subsurface water. And could you imagine what's trapped in the subsurface ice that could tell you so much about you know the history of mars and if there was ever life there and you know i mean it's I, bet amazing. It's, I bet it's that damn yeti it probably is <laughs> that's that's why they don't want you to know it all it's all our stories it's all about the big our stories always connect and, <laughs> like it, we would tell you about mars but there's bigfoot there yeah so we can't tell where you it came from uh so very interesting story and i will link to that one just a lot of really cool space news i do have one more space story it's not about water or life on a planet but it's something nasa has announced really yes nasa has now invited tourists to the space station oh so starting in 2020 i mean pretty soon they are going to have two spots a year available for tourists to go for up to 30 days to the international space station oh my god it's an astronomical amount of money to do it. But if you had the money, wouldn't you do it? Well, I'm going to do a GoFundMe mm -hmm. um, because there's one person that I want to go to the space station. Mm -hmm. And I think we can really get some money on the GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea who I might want to send up there? To the International Space Station? Yeah. Um, 
Oh, Mad Mike Hughes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Give me five. That's it. Yep. Yep. So, so he can tell us once and for all if that earth is round. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, NASA's, you know, NASA's just fed up, right? Right. They are just like, look, all right, <laughs> we're going to start sending these bastards up to the space station. Right. And, you know, show them we're not on a harness. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's um, that's that's funny. <laughs> well, the trips to the International Space Station will reportedly be facilitated by SpaceX and Boeing. Mm. So NASA's kind of having those people, yeah, do the taking them to the space station there, and there those companies would end up making most of the money, even though NASA would make some money off of this, and it, it is something that could help fund their programs. Most of the money is going to be made by SpaceX or Boeing, or whoever does the actual taking the astronauts into the space, because the company would be responsible for making sure that whoever went met the criteria to be able to go to space. You know, you have to be physically fit. You can't just send anybody up there, and you have to have certain certifications, things like that. But it's rumored that the estimated cost for the trip is 50 million dollars a seat oh my god per seat that's just for the trip now it, it once you get there you got to pay for your room okay so 50 million dollars doesn't cover it all 50 million dollars covers the the ride up to the space it just says ride up to the space station i wonder if they're going to charge you 50 million more to bring you back I bet. You're like, now that you're up here, uh, we didn't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you, if you want to go home. <laughs> they give you one of those Red Bull parachutes. <laughs> so once you're up there, the room and board will be $35,000 a night. Well, that's a steal after the $50 million. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm sure there are people that would be willing to pay that. If I had it. Yeah. I mean, if you just had it laying around and, you know a bank somewhere a Dude, swiss bank account somewhere if it was the last 50 million i had mm -hmm. i would do it still i mean i've always <laughs> wanted to go to space i mean i would love to go to space it would be definitely an amazing experience and it's a, it's cool that you can go for up to 30 days so like if you paid the 50 million and you had the money to stay that many nights i mean why wouldn't you stay the whole time and get the full-on astronaut experience you know i'm not an organ donor right but if they would take my body to space mm -hmm. to do like space cadaver stuff space cadaver stuff it's got to be called something right so you know if they some science students up there want to you know mm -hmm. a big white dude to do experiments on right that'd be really cool to me <laughs> like i mean i'd still make it to space right right you would you would i really hope Somebody cleans in there before they start bringing I was thinking of that. When you were doing there. that, I was like, didn't we just do a story a couple of weeks ago about all the the, the five million kinds of bacteria they and found? how nasty it is. Yeah, yeah. and they, like the space herpes are just flying around. And they, it, once you get up there, you can't be like, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm going to need another room if because you guys, this one's disgusting. If you guys have never seen the Ice Pirates... I'm just telling you right now, you don't know what you're missing. Go wherever you have to go. B buy, rent. You can find it on some streamer somewhere. Mm -hmm. The Ice Pirates. It's like from 1983. Um, when little Stacy and little John were growing up, it was one of those movies that played continuously on the movie channels. Mm -hmm. But it is a takeoff, Star Wars, all this stuff. But it is so... It's like a spoof. It's so freaking funny. It's got like the... It's, is that the space... <laughs> Herpes it's got movie. the space herpes and even as a kid i laughed so hard because uh jason is the is the hero's name mm -hmm. and he's sitting there and all of a sudden everybody's sleeping on the spaceship and you just hear like <laughs> and this this little clop of goo mm -hmm. with an eyeball starts just and it's it's just like shh moving across the floor and he gets bit and he's like oh my god and there's like space herpes and i don't know why but man that has cracked me up for so long it and still cracks you up yeah well i mean it's a really funny movie if you like <laughs> stupid if if you're a big fan of stupid then it's a great movie so just thought i'd throw that out there space herpes learn it love it it's great all right so well that's all of the space news so let's move on to possibly cursed movie sets oh no yes this is an interesting this is about the bond 25 no movie and the set is currently on lockdown after three huge explosions on the set 
what happened was they were doing a stunt uh, where it was something about some uh, fireball had to go through a lab or some sort of, they didn't give a lot of information on that, but it went wrong and there were three loud explosions, one after the other, and a member of the crew was lying on the floor outside injured. Like people got injured and they had to close the set down and this isn't the only thing that's happened on this film daniel craig was hurt and they had to shut production down for like a week because he hurt his ankle and there's been a couple of other like strange things that have happened like bad luck wise on the set so you know people are starting to float the curse word around with the cursed movie the curse word the curse word yeah (laughs) check 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 um no that's that's really and that's really crazy because I mean we we always cover the weird stuff and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think when we did our curse show mm-hmm. there were several like movies wasn't there yes and this one they're saying this movie has had this is just the latest setback because it's seen like claims of infighting and different crisis and stuff like wow. that so hopefully they get their stuff together but in the spirit of the cursed movie set I right? thought I would do a list for <gasps> you yes and I uh, I have eight things here because I distinctly remember you enjoy lists with eight oh, things. Oh, yeah, because they make so much sense. Of, instead of the mundane five or ten. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, this isn't like a top eight list. These are not in any particular order. I just have eight things. As always with us. Yes. So. Uh, just eight things about haunted movies or movie sets that I thought were really interesting. Okay. And All I right. tried to stay away from the. I mean, a few of these are obvious, but I tried to get a few that you maybe had never heard of. Haunted or cursed? Uh, haunted and or cursed. Okay, sort right. of. So some I got of them you. are. I know, I got you. I'm I'm being I'm playing the part of Stacy. I need yes. specifics. Yes. Some of these are curses. Some of them are hauntings. Maybe curses. Which I could don't know. be a curse. Just weird. All right. So the first one is from an unreleased movie, and it's called A Took. Mm. A T U K. It was some kind of comedy fish out of water movie about an Eskimo in New York City. Okay. Something like that. The movie was never released. And here's why. They had the script. And when it was first written, the lead role was talked about for John Belushi. Wow. No, no. I've heard of this. Yes. And Belushi read the script. This goes to Farley, right? He was interested in the role. And he ended up dying of a drug overdose in 1982. Yeah. So after Belushi's death, you know, they still wanted to make the the movie. So the lead role went to Sam Kinison, oh the comedian. God. And a lot of problems delayed production. Kinison wanted part of the movie to be rewritten. So production was halted. And after a few years, uh, Kinison died in a car crash. Yeah. And so the movie did not get made. Right. So then the it sort of sat around for a few years, but then they brought it back up. And the lead role was then passed on to john candy yeah in 1994 oh my god and he took the script he liked it and i think he was going to do it but then he died of a heart attack right so then in 1997 after nobody else would touch the movie chris farley agreed to wow. that he would do he went into talks for the lead role and ended up dying of a drug overdose so since then i don't think they've offered the movie to anybody else but i i guess it's sort of considered a cursed well, yeah. Cursed role, cursed I mean, script. Dude. I don't know what's in the movie, but I wouldn't touch it for mm. anything. That is crazy. So isn't that interesting? So I'm, I don't know if it would. I mean, if you're a heavy set dude, you better watch out. Yeah, right. Don't. Somebody it, better warn Rosie O'Donnell. Somebody sends you the, a took script. Don't even read it. Just yeah, send it back absolutely. and be like, no. No, that's crazy. <laughs> All right. So the next one on this list, and this is one of the obvious ones, it's The Omen. Probably one of the most cursed kind of movie sets yeah that there was and you know during filming the script writer's plane was hit by lightning yeah and then also gregory peck's plane he was on a plane with the executive producer and their plane was hit by lightning and then that same executive producer this hotel that he was staying at during production it was bombed by the ira yeah and then later on a restaurant that the entire cast was supposed to go eat at it was also bombed by the IRA. And then an assistant to the special effects consultant uh, on Friday the 13th of August 1976, he was in a car crash in Holland. And his assistant was in the car with him and was sliced through by the car's front wheel. Oh, my God. And when he got out of the wreckage, when Richardson scrambled out of the wreckage, he looked up and he saw a road sign that said, Omen 
because there's a town, O-M-M-E-N, called oh Omen, my. and it was 66.6 kilometers. That's what the sign read. Oh, my God. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? And one of the film's tiger handlers died. Gregory Peck's son shot himself sometime before production in a plane that they scheduled for every, to use in the film. Uh, at the last minute, was rescheduled because they needed it to take some businessmen somewhere. It crashed and everybody on board died. So it's like everything around this film was just, I'm surprised this film got made. Dude, I've got so many chills. I know. The, the car crash thing. Yeah. It's really weird. No, I've got so many chills yeah, right now. Yeah, I do too. I do too. Look at me. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so, so um, this is going to be, this is one of those where everybody's going to get a hold of me mm-hmm. and give me a hard time. Okay, right. but I I believe, guys, I could get on this show and act like I'm the coolest cat that's ever been. Mm-hmm. I could get on here mm-hmm. and say, yeah, I did that. I did that. And I don't like doing that. So I'm going to tell you the truth. Mm-hmm. I never have seen The Omen. You've never seen the whole thing? I've never seen a second of it. Oh, it's very disturbing. Well, that's the reason I didn't want to see it. So I'm just going to tell everybody. So I grew up in church. Mm-hmm. And I was always afraid of anything satanic. Mm -hmm. So honestly, that's where my love of, you know, like satanic metal and all that stuff later on. Mm -hmm. It was like, does that make sense? Like, you know, people ride roller coasters, right? Because they're the thrill. Right. So later on, me getting into all my hammer horror, me getting into all the metal, me, Mm because it was a thrill for me. Right. Okay. But for some reason, the overtly, this is an and by God, I've said it. I named an episode. Everything is scarier in the 70s. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. The way the music was, the practical oh, effects, yeah. the mm-hmm. film, even when they were using that real film, mm-hmm. everything was just scary. And the omen, for whatever reason, scared the piss out of me. It's probably because somewhere deep down inside, you know, it's it's true. It yeah. could happen. That and Rosemary's Baby. Mm-hmm. I've never seen either one. Mm-hmm. I couldn't bring myself to watch either one. I've never seen Rosemary's Baby. You know, I didn't watch scary movies when I was younger. I didn't watch them until I was older because they just scared me. Any I, scary movie. I watched the crap out of scary movies and I watched just about every scary movie. And, you know, I, uh, like my son, I could probably give all kinds of crazy trivia about most scary movies. Mm-hmm. I'm just being honest with you that for some reason. Well, if you ever want to watch it, I'll watch it with you. I mean, I, I will. Mm-hmm. I'll watch it, mm-hmm. but I want to watch it in the bedroom. Okay. I don't want to watch it. I don't want to let like Ariana watch it. No, no. You and I will watch it one night. Okay. So number three on the list, The Conjuring. Really? Yes. And it says, you know, it talks about how it's based on the true story of the Perrin family who experienced all that unexplained ghostly activity in their home. And it said that the family visited the movie set a few times, except for Carolyn Perrin. She would not go anywhere near it. And she's the wife and the mom of the family. And it says strange events kind of surrounded the making of the movie. Like one time when the family was on the set, a strong wind came up and kind of swirled around where they were standing. And members of the crew standing nearby noticed that none of the trees were moving. But there was this strong wind kind of blowing around where the family was. Yes. In a graveyard. And at that same time, Carolyn, who stayed home, in Atlanta, felt this strange presence in her house, fell down and had to be taken to the hospital oh at the same time that that wind happened. And it said that a couple of days later, the hotel that the actors and the crew were staying in caught on fire and everyone had to be evacuated. And the director of the film, James Wan, he recalls working late in his office one evening and his dog started growling at something, something he couldn't see. And he couldn't find anything that would antagonize the dog, but the dog just kept growling like at the corner of the room do you hate it when the animals do that i do so i do but you know it's funny because i love i mean we love that movie Mm -hmm. and we love all the conjuring movies Mm -hmm. of course we love ed and lorraine warren Mm -hmm. uh rest in peace but it's just i know people everybody's a critic but you know we we really love those movies but that first one was actually creepy as crap it really was it uh, really was it was creepier than the second one yeah yeah it was a creepy movie all right so number four the possession Oh my you know, the one God. with the Dybbuk box. Are you kidding? There's stuff around that one? Cause, okay, guys. Yes. That's that's like literally modern era. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite horror movie mm-hmm. in the modern era. Well, uh, 
I guess this is talking about Jeffrey Dean Morgan, you know, that yes. played the lead role. He admitted to being a skeptic, but he couldn't help but being freaked out by some of the things that were happening on the set, like lights exploding for no good reason and chilly breezes kind of wafting through the closed sets when they knew it was all closed off. There was still these chilly breezes. And he claimed that it only seemed to happen when they were doing specific scenes in the film. And he said the creepiest incident, however, was when the storage facility where all the props were being stored caught fire and burned to the ground. And when they investigated the blaze, they confirmed that it could not be blamed on arson or an electrical fault. Like they didn't know how the fire started. And the Dybbuk box that was used in the movie was destroyed in the fire. So I guess they had to get another one. Holy crap. And it says that there is, of course, a real life Dybbuk box out there. And the owners offered to bring it. But the cast and crew were like, no, don't bring the real box. So again, if you're a new listener, first off, let me tell you something cool. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine, friend of ours, Mm -hmm. is about ready to have access. Let me say it like that. I don't want to give too much away. Have access to the actual Conjuring house. So don't even think for a second that Stacy and John are not going to be <laughs> not going to be on the door going hello. Go hello, <laughs> mystery man. I'm not going to say his name. Now, just for new listeners, mm-hmm. uh, tell them what they're never going to see because it's on a something we filmed for somebody that's out there somewhere. But tell the nice people what happened with the Divic box. Um, yes, there was the same person you know owns a Divic box, mm-hmm. a real one that has a real demon in it and we were around it been featured on paranormal television it has like uh i think nick groff had it on his yeah he he let some other people borrow it to do tests on it and stuff like that and he had it at this location that we were at and he offered to take it out and he said you know don't touch it you know and i said john don't don't touch it (laughs) um i think we talked about that before and john touched it because that's john and uh it it made all kinds of weird things happen and it was it was crazy and it it gives off a if you've never been around a real divic box there is a weird feeling that yeah. you get around it it's very creepy so john always touches it yeah and yeah. and no matter what it is john mm-hmm. always touches it for whatever reason i don't know why i let you go by yourself when that sort of stuff happens i uh <laughs> so here's the thing guys like i don't remember what happened in the basement and uh, we went to the basement, mm-hmm. and I really wasn't me anymore after I touched this thing. And I think I challenged it, too. But the something happened in the video, You can because this thing was pro shot. Mm-hmm. In, the, in the footage, you can see me bending over, holding my spine, holding my mm-hmm. back. I get back up. The next thing I know, okay, listen, I remember touching this thing because I held it to go downstairs. I remember holding it and getting to the basement door to go downstairs. Mm -hmm. An hour or so later, the next thing I know, I'm by myself. Everybody else is in somewhere else in the building. And I'm laying sideways on a gym mat. And I could not, I literally could not move. Now, just to let you know, full disclosure, my, one of my greatest fears is my back being hurt where I can't move because it happened to me 20 years ago. I used to be a manager at a, a at a rent to own place and I had fired my entire crew in Charlotte. So I was doing all the deliveries and everything myself. Mm-hmm. And after work, I would, I would rent stuff all day. And then, and Stacy, we had a home in Gastonia, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And uh, my store was in Charlotte. And I don't, I've never told a story like this. So this is just me full disclosure in here. But I was picking up a, no, I was delivering. I was delivering like a side by side and a, and a big 60 inch TV all by myself and I would strap this around and back then they were like you know 2,000 pounds it was crazy I would strap it around myself I would strap the strap on the dolly around me and I was getting out and something happened something just happened to my back and I could not walk and the pain was so bad and I'm sure someone's had this before but the pain was so bad that if I tried to move a certain direction I mean 
there is no possible way you can do it. It's the, the pain is just so it's more than pain. It's unbearable pain. And, and until you've had that pain, if you've ever broke a bone and that initial pain of when you break it and it just this is like what happened and it wouldn't stop. So I actually used my arms and I was I was pretty buff um, and mm-hmm. I I pulled myself up into this box truck and by my arms. And I drove somehow back to our house. And back then we didn't have insurance. We didn't have, I mean, I had a great job, but we were still, we, me and Stacy were always by ourselves. Like we have great family and stuff, but Mm -hmm. it was a little taboo at the time with me and her. And just, you know, we were always, it was always me and Stacy against the world. Mm -hmm. And we went, you know, I got there and I literally crawled Mm -hmm. into the bedroom and this house was haunted as crap, by the way. But I literally crawled into the bedroom and I was in there. Now, Stacy's memory is better than mine on stuff like this, but I didn't leave this bed. It was weeks. For weeks. I had to pee in a jug. Yes, you did. Um, I had to bring you a jug. I don't know how I defecate. I mean, not to get, you know, but I... I I think you, every couple days, pulled yourself to the bathroom you must have because I don't remember bringing you anything to poop in. Yeah, I mean, so. I just don't know how that happened. <laughs> I don't remember that. But I remember trying to walk and I couldn't walk. And the whole mm-hmm. time, Stacy's like, "We we gotta call an ambulance. We gotta." And I wouldn't have because it was gonna cost. I mean, and I was missing work, and I mean, I was the only person there. So anyway, it was really crazy. And I think we eventually went to the doctor. But you know how it is when you don't have insurance. They're mm-hmm. just like, "Hey, we'll give you a shot." Um, whatever. Well, eventually you could get up t- gingerly yeah. and walk, and yeah. it it did heal itself but to the, a point. But the story is that fear mm-hmm. has been in mine and Stacy's head ever since because of my way I work and and jobs I do. I've got a very important job, mm-hmm. and you know, so it, every no matter how important the job is, if if you are out of work for a paycheck. Mm-hmm. You're done. In mm-hmm. in this day and time, yes. in this modern world, not many people can last a paycheck. Right. And so it's just interesting that after you touch the Dybbuk box, the one thing that happens to you is your back goes out. It's my greatest fear. Yes. Somebody had to carry you to the car. They had to carry me to the car. Nobody mm-hmm. would go this. Anyway, it it was really strange. Mm-hmm. And I I think people were being influenced because I wanted Stacy. Mm-hmm. And Stacy normally doesn't leave me. Stacy normally is not the person that goes, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to the third floor, I, you know, without consulting with me or without. And it's not that there's a, a leash on her. That's just I'm like that with her, too. No, usually, especially and, when we're investigating, we and usually we're investigating. always go together. Yeah. And uh, so for this, some reason we didn't go together. Right. It was this, weird. This weird thing happened <laughs> and, and we were apart. And that was another fear because that I I realized and I was like, wait, I'm not with her. And it's it's honestly, we're that close that if we're doing something like that, hey, it's John and Stacy. It's weird. I sent you off with the big box and didn't go. Because yeah, I know very well that you're going to touch it. That's not how we are. <laughs> That's not how we are. So, and and no, I'll, no, I'll be strange. honest with you guys. We were filming. We were filming something important. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I'll just say it. We were filming a pilot at the time. And and it was about John and Stacy. So that even more make doesn't make sense that we wouldn't have been together. And yeah, so it was just crazy everything that happened. And now it's a Dybbuk box, you know. So as far as curses go, those things are for real. I'll let you continue with your cool curses, but wow. <laughs> okay, so number five. We're yeah. up to number five. So this is a movie that I had never heard of. It's called The Ghost of Goodnight Lane. Okay. And it's a movie from 2014. So the movie was inspired by a haunted movie set that was owned by Media World Company in Texas. And the producer of the film, he knew that the staff had had visions of an unknown male while on the set. And things happened like film equipment was moved when no one was around and someone got slapped with by, you couldn't see someone who did it, they just got slapped in the face mm. by an unseen hand. And all these incidents had been going on for quite a a while and so they started keeping a record of the unexplained 
incidents. And the producer even brought in paranormal investigators in 2010 that confirmed to him that the set was haunted and they did like EVPs and stuff like that. So it inspired him to start working on this script of The Ghost of Goodnight Lane. And he used the haunted set in the movie to film on. Wow. And so I thought it was really crazy that a haunted set inspired a film and then they used that set in the film. So the cast and crew of the film reported flickering lights while they were on set, uh, fixtures falling from the ceiling without warning, and some of the crew heard their names being called by disembodied voices. Wow. Now, do you know who stars in this movie? No. Lacey Chabert. Oh. Isn't that crazy? I can't believe I've never heard of it. <laughs> Lacey Shebang. <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty crazy. It was filmed in Texas, so we might have to check it out. I've You're never damn right. seen it, so. Lacey Shebang is, uh, <laughs> in case you guys don't know, if something unfortunate ever happens to Stacey, she is the... She's on your list. She's the heir apparent. <laughs> yes, she's there, on John's list. Well, there's no other people on the list. That's that, Really? There used to be a longer list. Yeah, well... <laughs> Some of them have taken themselves off the list. Um, <laughs> right, right. Like, well, speaking yeah. of the list, yeah. Uh, number six is not a movie. It's a TV show, The Ghost Whisperer. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I thought you might reinvent that. Well, okay. There's two people on the list. <laughs> right, right. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry, <laughs> Jennifer Love Hottie. <laughs> so, Jennifer Love Hewitt uh, was talking to Ellen DeGeneres in oh. 2007, like on her show. And Ellen's she, a fun person. She was talking. Uh, she has a fun show. I, mm-hmm. I like her comedy style. Yeah, I think it's funny. So the set of the TV show is said to be haunted, and she was talking about this to Ellen, and she says she has footage to back up her claim. So Jennifer was busy shooting a scene, and the film crew noticed something strange kind of going on behind her while they were filming. It was like something was moving in this shadowy spot just over her shoulder. So she was kind of figuring, she was like, I wonder what that was. And so they replayed the footage, and they were shocked because they saw what looked like a ghost turning around right behind her Nuh-uh. yes and it all just happened in a few seconds but they <sighs> caught it on film are you serious mm-hmm. and they said that other instances of activity on the set included uh, cast and crew members feeling something tug on their clothes and hewitt herself felt something tug at her dress and sometimes the lights moved around on their own and one or two even exploded over the act- actor's heads and objects would vanish without a trace only to turn up in other places. Happens to us all the time. Yes. So she said that all these events kind of made other actors and actresses kind of think twice about being guests on the show. But, you know, the show's about a medium. So it's interesting that those sort of things kind of happened on the set. That is really cool. I wonder yes. if there's footage somewhere, like in a locked vault. I don't know. I don't know if they still have that footage. Because that was back in 2007. So it's quite some time ago. Dude, we need to get a hold we'll of Jennifer Love Hewitt. And <laughs> Listen at you. I need to talk to her personally. Well, no, 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 no. I'm very innocent. Um, right, right. I was just, I'm serious. You know, she had that event. I would like to maybe talk to her about it and see how open she is to... I don't know. I, I tell you what, if I if I pass, mm-hmm. there's going to be some tugging on some. <laughs> It'll be tugging on her dress, uh, yeah. right? <laughs> All right, number seven. Yes. Number seven, The Passion of the Christ. Yes, yes. Now this, you know what? Almost everybody who mm-hmm. plays Jesus mm-hmm. ever mm-hmm. is is done. Yes. Well, I've never seen this movie, but supposedly there was a lot of cursed things that happened on the set. It says that some guy got struck twice by lightning. The assistant director on the set got family member of mine twice by lightning. And the main actor, the guy that played Jesus, um, was also struck by lightning while he was doing the Sermon on the Mount. Now, it seems to me that if you're making a movie about Jesus and you're getting struck by lightning you might want to step back from what you're doing. Yeah. Like some, some, there's a message there. Dude, that somewhere. movie was so controversial. It was. But the man that played Jesus, it said that smoke literally came out of his ears. Who played Jesus in that? It's um, Daniel Day-Lewis? Jim Caviezel? I don't know how you say his last name. I don't know. I've never I think the seen... guy was like a big deal, and then he 
was nothing because of yeah, that. Yeah, well, wait, he, um, wasn't it the guy that from the County of Monte Cristo? Yeah, I think it is the same guy. Yeah, that's one. Of, that's one of our favorite yeah. stories and movies. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah. Never seen this movie, but they said that he also suffered hypothermia, a lung infection, and pneumonia while filming, and got terrible headaches and skin infections because of the long makeup sessions he had to sit through. And I believe he. Uh, the nails through the hand didn't help him. <laughs> I know. He had a piece of flesh ripped out during the, quote, fake whipping scene. Huh. And he dislocated his shoulder while carrying the wooden cross. So just, you know, tons of stuff. Jesus, they actually... <laughs> <laughs> they actually really just... persecuted him. I don't know. It's crazy. But, um, yeah, lots of weird things on that set. So number eight, the last one, The Crow. I couldn't do the oh, list without, wow. without adding The Crow. Wow. Um, of course, tons of things. Uh, the most devastating being, you know, Brandon Lee accidentally being shot. Yeah. it's It was weird because in the movie, I think he gets shot. Yes. His character gets yes, shot. Yes, and yes. then he really got shot. And that's how he died. But on the first day. And that's day, still the scene in the movie. Yeah. The first day of shooting. A crew member had to be hospitalized because his crane ran to a power cable and he suffered burns over 90% of his body. A construction worker, he drove a screwdriver through his own hand. A set sculptor drove his car through the props room, completely destroyed it. They were filming in North Carolina in March and there were unseasonably frigid temperatures. Plus there was like this huge storm, like a hurricane or something that came through and destroyed most of the set. I mean, it was just problem after problem after problem. Hurricane course, Hugo maybe? I'm not sure. It didn't say it just it's a storm, but I'm pretty sure yeah. that there was a hurricane. But of course, the most devastating being Brandon Lee being killed during the shooting. But obviously, yeah, very cursed. There was some uh, there were strange circumstances around his father's death as well. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that that's really the the crow is one of the famous ones. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I had to up. add it on the list. But there you go. Eight cursed movie sets to go along with the bond well that was story. freaking awesome <laughs> i mean that was probably one of the better segments thank you for that that was You're a welcome. lot of fun all right well let's move on with our news we've still got actually kind of a little bit of a stack here so let's keep going yeah, so this is sort of an, quite a bit of a stack over there. <laughs> this is sort of an update sorry grand antonio comes out every now and then <laughs> this, oh, is a, oh, this is an update yes i want to tell i want to tell everybody something funny here okay i'm going to kind of uh break the fourth wall okay so we've been doing this show for so long. Now, remember, I started this with sleep debt. Okay? Right. So At about two in the morning. So I wasn't joking when I said <laughs> that I slept two hours and then I got up and I worked all day. Uh-huh. And then we had some crazy stuff happen. We just did. Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll never forget it. And we watched a couple of episodes of television. We watched Unidentified, whatever. And then we started doing this. Okay. It is so, it's like 6 a.m. now. Okay, we started this at, at like one, one or two, yeah, close to two. And I know I think it was close it to might one, have been one. <laughs> and and somehow we're still doing this. It's so early that even though we've got our our studio stuff up, we've mm-hmm. got our you know our, our sound proofing stuff, we can hear the freaking birds. I think it must be right at the window. I mean, <laughs> like right at the we window. We can we can hear the freaking birds. You know, like when you were in school and you were you would stay up so late at a friend's house or something, mm-hmm. and you start hearing the birds. You're like, mm-hmm. oh crap, you know. <laughs> we should probably sleep. It's pretty funny. All right, so this is an update about the UFO monument in Sheffield, and we talked about the story about how they had this monument for the Reed family, right? You know, uh, UFO encounter. And that there was a problem with the town of Sheffield saying that it needed to be moved because right. it was in a bad place. So it's been this years long drama over this monument where at first when they put it up, the town, he claims the town gave him the location. He put it up. But then they said, no, that's not in the right place. You're going to have to move it. So he moved it to a farm that belonged to a friend of his mm-hmm. and told him he could have this land to put his monument up so he put the monument up landscaped it there's benches and lights it's like a little park and it has this monument well then the town came back and said that the monument had to be moved again because it was on the town's right of way and it was like 50 feet too far and he was like you know you gave me yeah. this location and that was what the last story was about right. was i remember that, this yeah, yeah we, we, we were just completely flabbergasted so now the town has come out and pulled up the monument and taken it away what yes they took the monument and every part of the park that was on the right of way but they left 
any of the park that was on that farm that was not on the right of way. So there's still some benches and some lights, but they've taken everything else away. And of course, Tom Reed is is just beside himself. Yes, he's he's got a lawyer now. He thinks he's claiming that the town has basically stolen his property. That it wasn't hurting anything being on just because it's the right of way yeah. doesn't mean that they or that doesn't mean they're ever going to use that. Right, exactly. And and I kind of agree with him. Like even if there was a problem, if they came and moved it, why couldn't they just have moved it fifty feet to yeah. the left and left it there? Right. You know, like it seems like it's become a petty thing. Oh, it now. is a petty thing. And so, you know, someone from the town was like, you look, the monument was removed at considerable expense to the town. They don't know, you know, how that's going to get paid for. Considerable and, expense. Yeah, I know. And so Reed told the people writing the article that his nonprofit UFO Monument Park Incorporated has retained a lawyer and plans to contest the town's action and have that reinstated where it was so i don't understand i wonder what the town folk think like i don't know and because it, it's not like it was unsightly it was actually before it was there it was just an unsightly looks piece like of it land. would bring a lot of people to sheffield right, i a mean tourist attraction yeah. exactly and i think i mean that sheffield's whole... not really a top destination <laughs> when i'm thinking of what i'm going to do in london i mean or england right. you know and right and even some of the townsfolks were like you know he keeps it nice it's landscaped it's a nice place to sit before it was just trees and it was messy and now it's pretty you right. know why would they even bother doing that so i don't know just a little update there i thought that was kind of crazy that they would would actually haul it away like that sounds like a very father brown type area (laughs) yes it does you know what i mean there's like some butthole like (laughs) that's doing that we're gonna have to figure it out and it's time for somebody to find somebody murdered and right right just laying there in the park on the bench all right well another update is about the treasure hunt in canada we talked about oh yeah well it turns out that the first treasure the one in edmonton because they had one in edmonton one in calgary and one in vancouver the one in edmonton was the first one to be found before the weekend was over wow like it was a family and it's such a cute story because it's this family that likes to do puzzles and Mm -hmm. go outside and and they go geocaching a lot you know what geocaching is yes i do where you know you get clues and you use your gps and you find the little sister was addicted to it for a long time She loved it and it does sound fun even my mom did it with my little brother some is your sister hiking the appalachian trail all the way up she is. She's doing it in pieces. She's almost done the whole thing. I think she hasn't done the most northern states, but she has almost hiked the entire Appalachian Trail. Is she Trail. doing it by herself? She doesn't normally do it by herself. She might be this time. I saw some pictures on Facebook. She may be by herself this time. She's not normally by herself. And has she decided to quit to... eating? Yes. Okay. Yes, she has. Did you see d- how d- thin? D- yes, I did. Yes. And I even told her the other day because... I was talking, she was driving, she worked, you know, all over the country and she was driving home and she calls me sometimes when she's driving because she's bored. And I can't remember what we're talking about, something about the dentist. I was talking about going to the dentist and she said she had a hurt tooth and she needed to get it fixed because she needed to not, not eat. (laughs) I was like, no, I agree. You need to eat something. So. Yeah. Super thin. I mean, you guys, I mean, it's crazy. (laughs) It's, I mean, right now she looks so much, I can see the sister thing. Mm Mm-hmm. A lot more, you know, like you guys look very, very similar right now. And Yes. Well, she's been doing that whole healthy eating. That was part of the backpacking. She does, a, she does rucksacking. She well, does everything. She's like just, my sister does so many things. She's made different. She was never, yes. you know, a, you know, I thought never, but now, you know, she's like skin and bones. Like, yes, very But skin. I thought it was really cool about the Appalachian Trail. I yes, was very she, impressed. She does like, That's she even worth hiking. mentioning on the show. <laughs> well, this family, since they like doing so many puzzles together and the going outside and the geocaching, they decided that this would be a fun family activity for them. They didn't think that they were really going to find it. And so they got their clues and the next night they went to where they thought it was hidden and they found it. They found the voucher and they won a hundred thousand dollars. So pretty awesome. I don't think the company uh, gold hunt expected someone to find it quite so quickly, but I feel like this family, this is something they do a lot. And you know, when you geocache, you have to solve clues. Right. That's part of it. So they were very good at it. And when I found this article, it said that the competition was still running in Calgary and Vancouver. But then I did notice that though they did announce the, somebody found the one in Calgary a few days later. So it took the one in Calgary almost a week to be found, which is better. Wilkins. I, I don't know. Yes, y- yes, sir. Get down the hall. Come here. Uh, y- yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Um, Wilkins, you uh, 
You made the clues <laughs> for the treasure, correct? Um, y- y- yes, sir. And you made those um, extremely difficult because we are talking, you know, a lot of money. <laughs> y- yes, sir. Um, could you give me an example of one of the clues? <laughs> um, I said, do you know... It sure isn't free. Hope it's not near that big tree. I mean, (laughs) how easy were the clues? I mean, I don't know because they're going to wait until all the prizes are found before they reveal where the location was. And, and, you know, they didn't post the clues for just anyone to see. I guarantee you they've got a new Wilkins. Possibly. But, you know, you don't, to me, I feel like that's good because you don't want to spend months. Right hunting for a treasure you know you want to be able to find it like within a week or so uh, i guess they want families to go vacation right they want it to be an activity and that people can Ooh. reasonably do i wonder if they get to towns like if you like hey everybody would come to vancouver mm-hmm. vancouver could give some of the money mm-hmm. like because it's going to bring all these people right well i mean this trial run was just for people that lived I, in this i'm just saying but yeah essentially that would be a they, great they, idea yeah they want the prizes to be bigger and if it works out then you know they could do it like a come here this weekend yeah. and we'll have this treasure hunt i don't know if the one in vancouver has been found it may have been found by now i yeah. haven't checked but i think that you know a week is about a pretty decent amount of time for something to be found or not found that's a that's they should, a good they should do time. one that and not allow hippies because you know that it's going to be a dirty hippie that finds it every time <laughs> um, i do know just playing about the dirty hippies i do know that they had to go on their twitter and remind everybody that the treasure hunt was all legal and to please not go on anybody's private property and dig <laughs> because you know they wouldn't have hit it on somebody's where you had to trespass you know oh my so. god there'll be a reality show in a couple of weeks <laughs> we found this map but pretty cool. It's, it's a cool idea. I hope they keep doing it. I, I thought it was pretty awesome and good for that family. Boy, they had no idea they were hundred thousand dollars richer. Just they'll have ten thousand after taxes for a weekend. Uh, maybe I don't know how Canada works. All right. So next story. This is about a, a morning show that they do on ITV called This Morning, That's and they original. always have really cute like stories and guests and. And things that you wouldn't normally see on a regular show. But they had this trio of self-proclaimed fairy whispers Mm. on the show. And it was these three women. They were adorable. They were dressed like fairies, had the glitter and the wings. And and they went on there and they supposedly had this film of proof of a fairy. Right. And so they showed this footage and it was one of the women. She said she was walking with her husband and they were just taking a video and they happened to notice this little green, like flapping little thing going through the video. Mm -hmm. Now, the host was like, "Um, couldn't that be a moth? And she's like, it could be a moth but it could be a fairy. You know, she was just very <laughs> nice about it. Yeah. And he's like, well, that's very convenient. And, you know, one lady was like, well, you know, fairies can disguise themselves, their nature. Yeah. And the reason I, I think everybody should watch this interview is not for the footage that's right. probably, probably a moth, really, but because of the things that these women said about fairies, I thought was very spot on. I personally believe in fairies. Right, yeah. And I... The things, the things that they were talking about were right in line with what we would know about fairies. You know, they're nature spirits. They're here to protect nature. There are good ones. There are bad, bad ones. ones, you know, and you can possibly see them and things they like and, and that sort of thing. And, and it was like very interesting information and very spot on, I yeah. thought. And she, even the one that was doing most of the talking, she was like, you know, you don't normally want fairies in your house. So if you have fairy doors, you know, put them outside. <laughs> Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. And they do, um, the place that they're from, they do like a fairy festival. So they were kind of promoting their fairy festival as well. But uh, it was really interesting. Like, and the announcer, the announcers, they didn't make fun of it. Like, they like were yeah. make, asking him questions and stuff. And one of them says that they can see fairies. And she even told the announcer guy, she's like, you even have one with you. And he was like, I do. She's like, yeah, he's like a little grumpy troll. And he was like, what? And he was like, well, okay, I guess I can see that. <laughs> So it was really cute and, and really interesting, and I really liked the interview, so I'm going to link to that's it. That's really cool. I, I love people that are so just, you know, comfortable in their skin. Yes. And and they yes. don't care to, and I love when people will talk to them mm-hmm. like that. That's how we've always talked to people. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the big things I miss about Maine 
mm-hmm. is some of those really wonderful neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. And especially when we went to our favorite beach, walking to the beach, all the little fairy houses. Mm-hmm. Do you remember all the fairy houses that would in the yard? Yes. And, yes. On the trees. Yeah. And and people, but but mm-hmm. they were everywhere. Even up mm-hmm. there at the little nature park, they mm-hmm. would have the fairy house day. And Oh yeah. Where you could go and build your own yeah. fairy house. Yes. It's just, that's one thing I miss about up there. See around here mm-hmm. where we're back in, uh, you know, Southwest Virginia, mm-hmm. you, you have the build your own meth lab, um, <laughs> you know, things like that. Play with this lump of coal. Uh, right. You know, that kind of stuff. I love it it's here. It's not quite as glittery, is it? No, no. God, I love it here. <laughs> All right. Well, I have a few more stories, just some little interesting tidbits that I wanted to bring up. And this one is about a shipwreck that was revealed in North Carolina on the beach by the sands shifting. Wow. And that it's was supposed a to happen. creepy skeleton of an 86-year-old shipwreck. Not a particularly old ship, is it? <laughs> No, 86 year old. It says the Cape Hatteras National Seashore posted an image of the wreck on June 1st, and they know that what the ship is. It's a four masted schooner, and it became stranded on Hatteras Island in 1933. And it's said that the ship was sailing south along the Outer Banks when a hurricane passed through and it caused the ship to crash onto the beach. And it says all the crew members were rescued, but the ship lay stranded there. Yeah. So during World War II, they burned the ship to get the iron fittings out of it. But it left just like the skeleton of the ship and it was covered by sand. So now sometimes when the sands shift, you can see the skeleton. It looks really creepy. There's a picture. It's really crazy. That is crazy. Yes. You know, that happens a lot down in Outer Banks areas and Mm -hmm. a lot more in other places. That that the sand must really shift around a lot. Uh, Well, because of the winds and the storms, it must be pretty windy down there. So but you know, they've been we've been having a lot of shipwrecks in the news lately because they had um one that was recently discovered. They were just testing an underwater drone and they discovered some nineteenth century shipwreck like in the Gulf of Mexico that they didn't know was there. And one time in Dutch waters, I think recently, they were searching for some shipping containers that fell off a merchant ship and they discovered a 16th century shipwreck yeah. just randomly. Boy, that's what you want to find right there. Yeah, I'm telling you. Good Lord. <laughs> Can you imagine finding one of the Spanish ships with all the galleons? Oh, and, that'd oh. be awesome. That'd be awesome. All right. So here's a really interesting story. And this is about a weather radar anomaly. And it's not chaff. Oh. Believe it or not, it's not. So some weather forecasters saw this huge, like, storm-looking cloud. And this is at the National Weather Service's San Diego office. And they were very confused. They had no idea what this was. This is this big blip. It wasn't raining. Wow. It wasn't storming. I had no idea what it was. And so they made some calls to their weather spotters. Right. Didn't know that was a thing. Oh, yeah. 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 So they You called, can do that around here. They called their weather spotters in the area. And finally, one of them was like, ladybugs. It was a massive cloud of ladybugs, which is called a bloom, but it measured 10 miles wide. It's called a bloom? It's called a bloom when that's, there's a yeah, big, no, that's cool. I was yeah. like, 10 miles wide and 15 miles long. What the hell? Flying around about 5,000 feet. And it's an annual thing that happens about this time of year. But there were so many that it got caught on the weather radar and made it look like a huge like storm area. Isn't that crazy? All right, give me those dimensions again. 10 miles wide and 15 miles long. And you know how little ladybugs are? Dude. Can you imagine how many ladybugs that is? Dude, 15 miles. Yeah, and 10 miles. 15 by 10 miles. I mean, that's that's a long, mm-hmm. that's a long way. Yeah, because ladybugs are what, like a quarter of an inch? Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> oh my God. So that's why I got picked up on that's the weather That's terrifying. Radar. Listen, has anybody's ever lived around ladybugs Mm -hmm. they are the most difficult thing to ever get out of your house yes they are you want them in your garden you don't want them in your house we had a house in hampton tennessee Mm -hmm. and we had ladybugs and at first it was like oh look a ladybug those things are worse (laughs) than look another ladybug (laughs) yeah they're they're worse than cockroaches i mean you really can't get rid of ladybugs if i had to have a choice though i would have ladybugs yeah yeah so all right so here's an interesting story from dallas and it's about this power surge that was accompanied by some mysterious blue light in the sky. So a flash of blue light lit up the sky in eastern Dallas County, and it was caught on a dash cam 
video taken by a man named Oliver Mathis. He was driving down Interstate 635 and it shows this flash of light for a few seconds. Now, when you see the flash of light, the first thing you think is Transformer because mm-hmm. that's kind of what it looked like. It was blue and it More was like, least, yeah. yeah, but when they talked to the electricity provider, they said that they recognized that there was a flickering of the electricity, but that no one lost power officially and that there weren't any reports of any Transformer explosions. So that nobody has any idea what this weird light was. And a lot of the people reported on social media that they had power surges in their home uh, at the same time that this weird blue light and that there were thunderstorms kind of in the area, but that particular area was dry and it wasn't really storming at the time. Like, And it didn't really look like lightning because to me it looked like it was coming more from the ground than it was the sky. But I don't know. It was really strange. No, that, 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 that is strange. And what I'm looking up here right now mm-hmm. was last year. It was it was almost this year. It was December 27th of 2018. Incredible, eerie blue light engulfed the New York City sky. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was after an explosion at a power plant. I mean, yes, that, it sort of makes sense on this one. Mm-hmm. But it, what did never make sense to me was the blue light, was how powerful this blue light was. Mm-hmm. And and it was one of the eeriest things ever. Yes. Now, that's a lot stronger than what happened in Dallas. Right, right on. I mm-hmm. get you. But it's just weird at the same time. It's, right. It's a similar major city. And, right. And, well, the weird thing about Dallas is that they didn't have a Transformer explode. Right. No, because no, that's no. what it looked like. Yeah. No, that's very strange. Yeah. So, I don't know. And Very weird. Yeah. Dallas is a, Dallas is a weird place anyway. It is. It is. All right. So let's move on to this next story. And this is about some relics from f- the Fatima Saints. You know, the oh, whole yeah, yeah, yeah. sighting yeah. of the that's, Lady of Fatima. That's one of the best stories ever. Well, there's some relics that were stolen from an Italian church. Ooh, I wouldn't want to steal awful? those. So there's a priest at Verona Church who's heartbroken by the loss of these oh. clothing that belonged to Francisco and Jacinta Marta, the, the children that saw the miracle. Yeah. And they're just small pieces of cloth, but you know you know how Catholics are about their relics. Well, I mean, yeah. That means everything. And so they belong to the saints of the Fatima apparition, and they were stolen from a church in Verona, Italy, um, where they were being taken around the country Country for veneration. And the priest told the Associated Press that they were stolen on this past Wednesday, and he said he was heartbroken and mortified, and that the theft also included copies of a crown and rose and rosary of the Fatima Virgin Mary statue. Those were just copies, but whoever stole it stole the whole like exhibit, possibly to sell it on the black market. Or whatever. I do believe that the police are looking for two particular suspects, so they may have a clue who did it. Is one of them Flambeau? I'm not sure. I don't think so. But when I was reading this story, I thought that I would look up, you know, sightings, actual verified, approved, you know, Vatican approved Virgin Mary apparitions. Yeah. Because I was curious how many times that they there were these apparitions that were actually sanctioned or whatever by the Vatican. And I found a list of 16, like, approved sightings, which is quite a lot, I feel like. Um, As early as 1531, like, the first one I saw was in Guadalupe, you know, Our Lady of Guadalupe, in Mexico in 1531. Um, But there is also uh, another link that I'm going to put up, and it's this world map. It's on that site. I can't remember what it's called. It's like some kind of site about maps of everything or something Mm -hmm. like that. That Somebody did a map of Virgin Mary apparition sightings. It has the ones that have been verified. It has ones that have not been verified. It has ones that are still under investigation. But there's like this whole huge map. A lot of them are in Italy. Right. (laughs) In in very dominant Catholic areas. But it's a really interesting map to look at. And you can, you know, read all the different stories about the times that there have been these sightings of the virgin mary so when she sighted does Mm -hmm. she this uh, has she talked other than this uh, you know fatima it's different every time at sometimes i think it's reported that she does speak sometimes she just appears so it every story is different but most of the time there are a lot of sightings where it happens for a long period of time like at a like it'll show up and then it'll go away and then it'll show up and it'll you know like so do we know the do we know the the last prophecy no i i mean i'm not aware of it if i i don't don't you think know. that's weird yes i do and i think the whole phenomena of that is very interesting anyway because 
it's a very real thing. Lots of people see it. And it's so powerful that these places where, you know, these apparitions have been seen become places of pilgrimage and they yeah. build churches and and it's very I'm telling you man there's something to it yeah there is i mean it's so. just like when um when a statue is crying blood or mm-hmm. i mean you see it i mean it happens what about mm-hmm. some of those um crucifixion statues where the jesus head will turn oh that's creepy i mean yeah man i mean <laughs> that i can remember one mm-hmm. where it's kind of at the back of the church it's a big church mm-hmm and there's a they're they're filming in there. It's like a very popular, famous cathedral, mm-hmm. and you can see the head, like move. I think they remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that stuff. I mean, it's it, in the it's just creepy, but um, it, that's interesting. It's always interesting to me about the about Fatima, and we might have to do a yeah a show about it's, it's, those it, sightings and stuff. It's very interesting to me, and it's interesting to me. Like, are we talking? Is this legitimate or is it a tulpa? Which is still legitimate. It's just, well, you know. I think the theory's even gone out. Uh, the alien theory has even yeah. come up before because it's a shining light in the sky. Right, right. And I mean, well, there's all different Also theories. comforting, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's it's just very, I mean, the, what, like the, the Fatima. It would have to be a mass hallucination, but on, mm-hmm. on the, the, like the grandest scale of all time. Right. Well, and like I said, there are a lot of those sightings where it happens for years at certain times of the day where people can come set their watch and come and see it and no joke go, yeah there i know i read one story about this one apparition that would show up on the roof of a church and yeah. it wasn't the same every day it wasn't like it was a reflection because it wasn't the same exact thing every day like sometimes right. it would just be the head and shoulders and sometimes it would be the whole mary but it always looked like mary wow. and you know people could come and see it and it would appear and then it would stay for a while and then it would go away and, and it happened for you know, either months or years. I don't remember exactly. Yeah, yeah, let's research that. Yeah, so very interesting story. It's sad that somebody stole the relics. Um, I hope that they get those recovered because... That's, that's just sad that's that terrible. there's even a market for it. I know. I mean, it's just, you know, somebody just... Poor guy. I mean, you, you care so much about something. I mean, mm-hmm. what is wrong with people? You, it's a couple of rags and, and, and to somebody that one time pay off... Mm-hmm. And obviously, it's not a holy person that's buying it. And, no, obviously not. You know, it's it's everything to this person. It's everything to this congregation. It's everything to them. You know, mm-hmm. why would you do that? Right. It just takes a real certain class of jerk. It does. I agree. All right. Well, let's go on to a more upbeat story. And this is about a tourist that was visiting a small museum in Canada. And he was on tour at the Vermilion Heritage Museum in Alberta. Now, this museum has a safe that was donated to them in the mid-1980s. And it had previously been used by the town's Brunswick Hotel, which closed in the 70s. And it had not been opened since the 70s. Nobody knew the combination. And they had people in there trying to crack the code over the years, locksmiths, everything. Nobody could open this safe. So every time tourists go through the museum they give him a chance to you know pop that thing open so this man named Stephen Mills he was on tour with his family and they you know they were shown the 2,000 pound safe and and they were like you know why don't you try and uh, crack that open so Stephen Mills got down there just joking around with his kids you know his kids put his ear to it and and you know just did a combination popped it first try Wow. Opened it right up. So it said that the dial numbers ran from 0 to 60. So he was just like, ah, 20, 40, 60. That's what I'm going to use. And it's a combination lock. So normally anyone that went to high school or whatever and had combination locks in their locker, you know, you go three times to the right, two times to the left, one time to the right. That's just the traditional old lock thing. Yeah. So that's what he did. He did three times to the right, 20, two times to the left, 40, one time to the right to 60. And it just opened. And he was more surprised than any everybody else watching. Like, everybody was stunned, but I think he was most stunned. Wow. What so was in it? It said, sadly, there was no hidden treasure inside the safe. But they found some papers from 1977 and 1978. One was a pay sheet, and the other was part of a restaurant order pad. And on the pad were receipts for, like, a mushroom burger for $1.50 and a $1 pack of cigarettes. So it was just some stuff from the hotel. It wasn't anything very valuable, but uh, it was interesting that he was able to do that. They should have gave him something. I feel like the museum is probably like, oh, I wish it was still 
yeah. walked. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, he got the notoriety. And uh, his kids, he said it was funny because his kids were like jumping around going, we cracked the code. Like they won something. Like, <laughs> well, they'll never forget that. No, it, that was pretty awesome. That's probably, so. that's the prize. All right. So two more stories here. So this one's about some New Zealand families that received handwritten letters in the mail claiming to be from their dead loved ones. Uh, this is kind of a weird story. Right. Uh, apparently these families were disturbed and upset because they received handwritten letters claiming that their children had died and that they were getting <sighs> it was like from a psychic saying things like, you know, your daughter or your son's with you. They want you to know that, you know, they're with you in spirit and that they're okay and like your daughter wants you to know that she's happy and that she'll meet you in heaven again someday. And so they were delivered to different houses in the area the only problem is none of these families had lost any children like they were all sent to the wrong place oh my god and so these people were some people were really disturbed like they they were sympathy cards and i don't really know what the point of that was and one person posted it the one person that got it actually posted it on facebook because she said that she wanted people to feel like it was less personal. Like, hey, you weren't the only one that got this car. Don't feel like you're being targeted for something. You know, other people got it too. I don't remember how many they said uh, they discovered were out. But people had differing results. Like some people were like, well, I just threw it away because obviously it was the wrong house. Some people were really upset by the fact that they got it. I don't... I, I mean, I would have probably just got rid of it and thinking that it went to the wrong house, but I, it, it's a little irresponsible of somebody. Yeah. I mean, I guess if it was a psychic trying to give messages, they had good intentions, but that's not the way to go about it. You don't just leave a card for somebody. I mean, what if they don't want to know that information? Yeah, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So, no, you, you always need to ask, do, you yeah. know, do, would you like to know or yeah. somebody comes to you? Mm-hmm. Well, in this day and age, I mean you got to be careful about what you get in the mail. I mean, a card like that could be seen as a threat almost. Absolutely. You know, so. All right, so last story. Yep. This one's great. This okay. is about a Florida man who poured salt in Walmart to get rid of the evil spirits around him. Oh, my God. Just went in the aisle. Apparently, a man in central Florida, he told the deputies that he poured the salt on the floor of the Walmart store to get rid of the evil spirits around him. And then he walked into the woods near the store and the manager called the police because they wanted him to be charged with trespassing. And a deputy found him laying under some trees in the woods, but he was still on Walmart property. So he was arrested and taken to the local detention center. He was 38 years old. Do you know what his name was? No. Damien Dean Cantrell. Oh, wow. (laughs) So his name is Damien. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting, weird story. I don't know. Obviously, he was having an issue. I don't, it doesn't say he was on drugs or anything. I wonder if it worked. He may have been. I don't know. Uh, Whenever I found the story, I believe he was still in jail. So I don't know how this played out. It would be weird if he ends up getting killed in the jail cell and they don't know how. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. But this story, I found this on our local news little, and is from Florida. So little, little supernatural going on there. <laughs> exactly. It's, exactly. Uh, too much salt. Sad that's that's sad that supernatural is going to end. I know. I know. That really sucks. Hey, listen, that was some great news. That was a lot of news. It was a lot of news uh-huh. and it was great news and I really appreciate it because, you know, that was just what the doctor ordered. It is going to be seven o'clock before we're in bed. Yes. In the morning, people. And that would be a full 24 hours uh, <laughs> that I've been awake on two hours sleep. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what in the heck I said during this show. All I know is I had a really good time and I can't wait to listen to it. <laughs> Probably be the best show we ever had. I mean, we have we, <laughs> no. we, we have a weekly listening party, not Stacy, because Stacy edits like she's the queen, right? So she edits for 12 hours straight or something. And then, I mean, that's not even counting the website time of updating that. You wouldn't believe what she goes through. And um, so she does a fantastic job. But then me and the girls, you know, as soon as it comes out, it's like a big time thing here at the house. We're really excited. So we always listen to it right off the bat. And just to let you guys know, you know, I love to listen to it. And here's why. When we're doing this show, Stacy and I, either one, we do not because we don't write anything down like uh, script. Mm -mm. So we have the stories. Uh, the reactions you hear are the actual reactions at the first of it. We just tell you because, you know, we talk to you like you're here at the house and mm-hmm. tell you what's going on and all that good stuff. 
because that's the way we always want it to be real and authentic. So a lot of times we really don't know everything that was said. We don't remember. I was, when Stacy's editing, I'll hear her laughing and she just didn't hear like something I said under my breath or <laughs> something like that. It happens every week. But um, anyway, as always, we hope you guys enjoyed the show as much as we did this week. This was a really fun one. You know, it's it's one of those things where sometimes you go into it and you don't know how it's going to be. This one for me right now is one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> Please don't forget the Facebook thing that I told you. You know, go on there, share stuff, and, and like it. I'm tr- that's, that's my big push right now. Do you think the great Antonio is still here? I, well, I hoped it. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think we might be able to find him in a few minutes because <laughs> I think he was looking for you. So, uh, yeah, you know what, folks? With that, my name's John, and uh, from my lovely wife, Stacy. so long from the Sideshow. Good night.